public hearing, we shall be discussing three bills on prohibiting SOGI-based discrimination. These are Senate Bills number 139 and 245, entitled An Act Prohibiting Discrimination on the Basis of Sexual Orientation and Gender Identity or Expression, SOGI, and Providing Penalties Therefore. The former authored by yours truly, and the latter by San Loren Legarda. Also, Senate Bill number 442 or 442, or an act penalizing discriminatory actions based on gender identity or expression and sexual orientation introduced by San Mark Villar. The committee would like to recognize the presence of Senators Amy Marcos, Bongo, and uh, Robin Hood Padilla. And uh, with the presence of uh, my good colleagues, the chair now declares a quorum. Just a brief opening statement, dear colleagues. Six years ago, the Philippine Senate heard for the very first time a bill that explicitly protects our LGBTQIA plus kababayan from discrimination and imposes penalties on discriminatory practices affecting them. This came 17 years after the very first anti-discrimination bill was filed in Congress, but was never heard. And since then, harassment, discrimination, and violence continue to be part of the everyday life of LGBTQIA plus Filipinos. Mga kababayan, hindi natin dapat hayaang magpatuloy ang ganito. While many claim that the Philippines is a country welcoming of the LGBTQIA plus, news are rife of abuses and discrimination against them. And these are just cases that land in the news, a tiny fraction of incidents that catch media's attention. So you can just imagine how many cases remain unaccounted for, and in many instances, hidden and unspoken. We are acutely aware of the persistent mocking and name-calling, which are often falsely considered harmless. We have heard of gender-based school and work is discrimination. Kamakailan lang, may kumalat na mi social media post ni Dylan Silva, isang LGBT student mula sa Cavite State University na nagsuot ng necktie sa graduation photo. Sinabihan daw siya na hindi ifa-flash ang litrato niya habang nagmamarcha dahil bawal daw ang cross-dressing. Sa kanyang post, ipinahayag niya ang kanyang pagkadismaya at naghingi pa ng patawad sa mga magulang niya, mga hindi tinatanggap sa trabaho o di ma-promote o di kaya ay pinagbabawal na pumasok sa ilang mga lugar because they do not conform to socially accepted gender norms. These are some of the other stories. Kailangan nating maintindihan at tanggapin na sentro sa usaping ito ay ang isyu ng diskriminasyon. Malalim na nakaugat na diskriminasyon. You and I know that we have to make this stop. We, as a society, have to make things right. Today, after 23 years since the first bill was filed, we not only look back at the tough journey the bill has gone through, but we also look forward in hope that we finally pass a law that ensures that LGBT people enjoy the same rights that the non-LGBT enjoy. Let us make sure that they are able to stake their claim as equal members of society. It is my distinct honor to shepherd the and um, before I ask our um, committee secretary to acknowledge our resource persons, may I also ask if my colleagues maybe have their own opening statements? Yes, uh, Sen. Robin Hood, Padilla, you have the floor. Uh, magandang magandang umaga po sa uh, uh, ating mga bisita. Lalong-lalo na po sa ating uh, mahal na tagapangulo, Senator Huntiveros, uh, magandang umaga po. 
Uh, napakaganda po ng uh, inyong uh, panimulang salita patungkol po yan sa pagkakapantay-pantay sapagkat yaan po ang sinasabi ng ating uh, saligang batas. Ano? Yaan po ang malinaw sa panimula pa, pa lamang sinasabi na po eh, kami ang uh, nakapangyayaring sambayan ng Pilipino na humihingi ng tulong sa makapangyarihang Diyos upang bumuo ng isang makatarungan at makataong lipunan at magtatag ng isang pamahalaan na kakatawan sa aming mga mithiin at mga lunggatiin. Magtataguyod ng kabutihan ng bawat isa, mga ngalaga at magpapaunlad ng aming kamanahan at titiyak para sa aming sarili at ang kanang susunod ng mga biyaya ng kalayaan at demokrasya sa ilalim ng pananaig ng batas at ng pahamalaang puspos ng katotohanan, katarungan, kalayaan, pag-ibig, pagkakapantay-pantay at kapayapaan ay naglalagda at naghahayag ng konstitusyong ito. Napakalinaw po doon na mahal na taga-Pangulo na wala pong sinabi dito ang kasarian. Wala tayong pinipiling kasarian. Ang sinasabi po dito sa panimula ng ating konstitusyon na lahat po tayong mga Pilipino ay pantay-pantay. Hindi lamang po sa mata ng uh, Panginoon Diyos, kundi sa mata ng batas ng tao. Yun lamang po. Maraming salamat po, mahal na taga-Pangulo. Maraming salamat din po, Sen Padilla. Shukran. Um, any opening remarks from our other colleagues here present? Um, other senators? All right. If not, before we uh, start the discussion, let's first acknowledge our resource persons. So, Comsec Gemma, please. Thank you very much, Mom, and good morning. The committee would like to welcome and acknowledge the following resource person. Joining us online from the Department of Education, we have Aaron John Castro, Ms. Dayanara Hoson, Mr. Earl Lucito, then from the Department of Justice, we have uh, State Council Maria Lorena Calo. Then from uh, the Department of Health, we have uh, Rodley Desmond Daniel Carsa. We have Mr. Uh, Adriel Pizarra. Then we have Ms. Madeline Casimiro and Mr. Admon Arqueles. Argeles. Then from the Department of Labor and Employment, we have Ms. Mercy Aporado. Then uh, from... Uh, the Department of Information and Communication, we have Assistant Secretary Maria Ture Teresa Camba. Then uh, we also have uh, from the Department of, uh, still from that department, we have Miss uh, Ayla Marie L. Nacionales. Then uh, from the Department of National Defense, we have Miss Natalie P. Labang. Then uh, from the Armed Forces of the Philippines, uh, we have Major Rachel F. Pacula. Then we have Captain Anthony Cabarteja, Jags. Then uh, still from uh, the PNP, we have Police Brigadier General Arcadio Hamora Jr. Then uh, we have uh, the Senior Legal Ca Officer, we have Police Lieutenant Colonel Catherine T. Cipriano. Then uh, from the Philippine Commission on Women, we have Ms. Clehenia Aurora San Juan. Then we also have Attorney Nathalie Antonio. Then uh, from the uh, Commission on Human Rights, we have Aaron Kayabiab. Then from the, uh, for the Technical Education Skill Development Authority from TESTA, we have uh, Ms. Maria Linda Andrade. Attorney Joyce Balong, Miss Beverly Bayonisto. Then uh, from the from the advocacy group, we have from the Galang Philippines, we have Miss uh, Max Marie Rose R. Ramos. Then uh, from the Punong Raya Bulacan State University Bahaghari, we have Max Keith Tuazon. And then Ganda Filipinas, we have Miss Noime Pontanos. Then from uh, the Philippine Anti-Discrimination Alliance of Youth Leader, we have Ms. Rafaela Pontetades. Then from uh, the 
TLF Share Collective Inc. We have Mr. Ferdinand Bemdahe, National Converter, um, Conver Convener, Miss Trans Global. We have Miss Mela Habihan. From the Alliance for Family Foundation Philippines, we have the Vice President, Attorney Joel Arsaga. And then from the Ladlad Caraga, we have Isang Semancho Bacasmas. From the Lagablab LGBT Network, we have the Secretary General, we have Mr. Job Ignacio, and Mr. Cesar Evangelista Bandia. From the LGBT Telon Film Production Service, Inc., and Fellowship of Redeemed Sexually Disoriented um, Individual, we, ha we have Mr. Chris Santa Brejida Cop. Then from the religious groups, we have uh, from the United Church of Christ in the Philippines, we have Mr. Joni Ben Marasigan. Then from uh, the Bible Values Movement, we have Mr. Harold Peña Herrada. Then from the Lord Who Cares Foundation, we have Ms. Balioni Suiko. From the Living Waters Philippines, we have Mr. Benjamin Cruz. From uh, Simbahang Christianong Lumad Inc., we have Hazel Joey Apino. Then we have uh, from Dabao Region Evangel Evangelical Association Ministers, we have Bishop Hurley Montes. Then from uh, the Saint Scholastic, uh, Saint Scholastic College Manila, we have Sister Christine Pinto. Then from the Polytechnic University of the Philippines, we have Max. Joyce and Isidro. From the University of the Philippines, Babaylan, we have Miss Clarice Robert C. From uh, the UP Gender Law and Policy Program, we have the Legislative Policy Officer, we have Hendrix Bongalon. Then from uh, the Discovery House of Montes Montessori of Quezon City, we have uh, Miss Kit Lasarte. Then from our health professionals, we have uh, from the Psychological Association of the Philippines, we have Dr. Mars Eric Reyes. And that's all, uh, Madam Chair, thank you so much. Maraming salamat din, Comsec Gemma. So dear colleagues, uh, the committee is now ready to hear the highlights so I'd just like to stress just the highlights of the prepared position papers or statements from our invited resource persons. And uh, just as a reminder, as the committee invitation indicated, everyone is requested to limit your presentation to not more than five minutes each. So first off, um, could I please call to make uh, the presentation for the Alliance for the Family Foundation Philippines, Inc., Attorney Joel Arzaga. You have the floor, Attorney. Good morning, Madam Chair, and good morning to everyone present. I'm Attorney Joel Arzaga of the Alliance for the Family Foundation, or ALFI, and ALFI recognizes the legislative intent of Senate Bills 139, 245, and 442, or the SOGI Bills, of eliminating undue discrimination and violence against persons, solely on account of their sex. Any form of undue discrimination and violence is reprehensible and is contrary to the state's constitutional mandate to value the dignity of the human person and to guarantee full respect for human rights. For this reason, Alfi urges for the strict implementation of current laws which already address undue discrimination and forms of violence. These laws are operative, the rights they provide are accessible to all, and the remedies they offer are available for all. Alfie takes note that the SOGI bills aim to penalize discriminatory practices that may not be addressed sufficiently by current laws. However, in the SOGI bill's pursuit of this, it unwittingly infringes on other constitutional liberties, goes beyond the mere intent of curbing undue discrimination and violence, and ventures into promotion of ideas or philosophies through definitions, proposed government programs and policies, information and education campaigns, and even media portrayals. It is these concerning features of the SOGI bills that Alfi respectfully expresses its opposition to. Alfi submits that the fight against undue discrimination and violence may be endeavored without propagating ideologies which lack objective standards and scientific basis. Alfi, in particular, 
expresses, it expresses its concern in opposition to the following. First, the definition of discrimination insofar as it includes any distinction, exclusion, restriction, or preference based on sex. The Soggy Bills purport to outlaw and consider as discrimination existing distinctions and classifications based on bona fide, objective, immutable, and biological differences between a man and a woman. This definition will have serious implications on sex-specific educational institutions, establishments and facilities, professions, associations, and sporting events. The policies of these sectors rooted on distinctions based on sex are impaired, if not effectively nullified, as those who will implement or apply these may face criminal prosecution, hefty fines, or imprisonment for committing a discriminatory practice. The soggy bills, if passed into law, may force these sectors to implement policy changes in violation of their academic freedom, religious freedom, property rights, freedom of association, all equally recognized and guaranteed by the Constitution. This definition in the soggy bills also affects and complicates laws anchored on distinctions based on sex, especially since the soggy bills state that the actual sex of the person subjected to discrimination is not relevant for the purpose of determining whether an act of discrimination has been committed. For example, the family code, which defines marriage between a man and a woman, will it now be discriminatory to deny marriage between a man and another man who identifies as a woman? The Magna Carta for women, will it now be discriminatory to deny access to its benefits to a man who identifies as a woman? The penal laws and rape through sexual intercourse committed by a man against a woman, can an accused man who identifies as a woman now question this law's application of being discriminatory? Biological realities should not be disregarded and sacrificed to accommodate individual convictions. Alfie urges his body to acknowledge and uphold the wisdom and merit behind the timeless and universally accepted distinction based on sex as essential to public order and the common good. Next. The soggy bills also define gender identities in a manner that is subjective, fluid, and unstable. As once emotional attractions and choice of identity are made the basis and are the determining factors. It bears emphasis that these factors are not tangible, not always externally manifested, and may even unilaterally change at any time. This uncertainty presents problems in the implementation of the soggy bills as a penal statute since it is unable to identify clearly and categorically those covered by the protections it offers. Those Attorney who would Arzaga, avoid, yes, I'm sorry, I have five minutes have already passed, but so far you've only presented the first, I believe, of uh, the yes, points you proposed, definition of discrimination. Perhaps by way of wrapping up so we can hear our next resource persons, you could at least enumerate the four other points that you oppose uh, to wrap yes, up, please. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Madam Chair, for that. Alfie, uh, just to highlight our oppositions, we oppose the definition of gender identities as uh, furthered by the bill. Next, there are specific discriminatory practices that um, infringe on constitutional liberty, such as uh, refusing admission or expelling a person from educational institutions on the basis of SOGI SC. We feel that this runs afoul educational institutions' academic freedom. Next, the uh, soggy bills must be expressed and explicit in carving out an exception to marriage licenses in the government documents that may not be denied on the basis of soggy SC. And then uh, with regard to um, preventing a child under parental authority from exhibiting or expressing sexual orientation or gender identity, we feel that children at this delicate uh, stage is not fully cognizant of the complexities of se sexual orientation and must not be allowed unguided or unrestricted uh, discretion. Finally, uh, Alfie opposes the soggy bills as it institutionalizes a state-sponsored promotion of gender ide ideologies without due consideration of individuals with opposing contrary views. To some, uh, Madam Chair, Alfie reiterates that the fight against Jew discrimination may be endeavored without forcing belief in matters that remain highly contentious and unsolved. And we enjoin the state to adopt a holistic and an encompassing approach in the efforts to eliminate undue discrimination and violence against persons without disregarding established truths about the human person. For only when a person is regarded as he truly is, consistent with his dignity, will there be authentic freedom and equality. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Attorney Arzaga. Um, just uh, right off, I could uh, try to 
reassure uh, the attorney and Alfie on a point of fact that uh, there is in fact no need to carve out an exception regarding the marriage license because uh, the SOGI Equality Bill or the Anti-Discrimination Bill until now and since the start uh, more than two decades ago is not providing, for example, for same-sex marriage. But I in, uh, invite our next resource persons, if you wish in your presentations, to further comment on the four other grounds uh, for opposition so far expressed on the definitions of discrimination uh, based on gender identity and uh, sexual orientation and expression, uh, on discriminatory practices, on uh, preventing children from expressing their SOGI, and on the institutionalization of state-sponsored promotion of a particular ideology. So thank you again, uh, Attorney Arzaga. Now I would like to call uh, for uh, TLF Share Collective Incorporated, uh, Mr. Ferdi. Yeah, you have the floor. If uh, Ferdi is, uh, Mr. Benviaje is uh, not yet here, uh, uh, could I uh, next uh, call uh, from the Psychological Association of the Philippines, uh, Dr. Mark Eric Reyes. Perhaps, uh, Dr. Reyes, you may also want to give your professional opinion uh, on the point about children expressing their soji or the prevention of children from expressing their soji. So, Dr. Reyes, you have the floor. Okay. So, good morning, everyone. Okay. First and foremost, I express my deep gratitude for the invitation to participate in this esteemed hearing on the three bills sponsored by Honorable Senator Mark Villar, Honorable Senator Lauren Legarda, and Honorable Senator Lisa Ontiveros on safeguarding and protecting the LGBTQ plus community. As president of the Psychological Association of the Philippines, I, I represent around 30,000 members all over the country who are staunch advocates of mental health and well-being. We give attention to everyone irrespective of all social predispositions. As early as 2014, we organized the LGBT Psychology Special Interest Group. The Special Interest Group is PAP's arm to address the needs and issues besetting the LGBTQ plus community through various channels such as webinars, research, close interactions, and public statements expressing our position on pressing social concerns relative to our advocacy. Our LGBT psychology special interest group is our manifestation of respect and cares for the LGBTQ plus community who are often treated as marginalized members of the larger society and are victims of misconceptions associating sexual orientation and gender identity with mental illness. The LGBTQ plus individuals in the Philippines experience stigma, discrimination, and violence based on their sexual orientation, gender identity, and gender expression, negatively affecting their mental health and well being throughout their lifespan. This stigma can take varied forms, including bullying and harassment of LGBTQ plus children in families and schools physical and sexual violence against LGBTQ plus Filipinos, denial of entry of transgender Filipinos into commercial establishments and public spaces, and discrimination based on SOGI in hiring practices, healthcare services, and housing. Research shows that such experiences of stigma and discrimination are linked to an increased risk of mental health problems which includes depression and suicide among LGBTQ plus people. Therefore, the Psychological Association of the Philippines reiterates its stand against discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity and expression, and rejects narratives that directly or indirectly use psychology to misinform the public and stigmatize LGBTQ plus Filipinos. Stigma and discrimination against sexual and gender minorities, including misinformed claims associating their identities and experiences with mental illness, have a negative impact on mental health and well-being of LGBTQ plus individuals, families, and communities. 
The PAP reaffirms its position alongside global initiatives to remove the stigma of mental illness associated with diverse sexualities and gender identities and to promote the well-being of all Filipinos, including those who are LGBTQ+. And today, we stand side by side with the Honorable Senator Mark Villar, Honorable Senator Lauren Legarda, and Honorable Senator Risa Ontiveros with their worthy initiative to work on the three bills earlier mentioned. The PAP favorably supports their advocacy and noble intentions. The experience of other countries shows that policies and legislation promoting equal rights and prohibiting discrimination can reduce stigma-based SOGI and lead to better mental and physical health. Anti-discrimination legislation is associated with decreased risk of psychological and physical health problems and improved well-being among LGBT, LGBTQ plus individuals. By virtue of their gender identity, trans women or trans penis are women and trans men or trans penis are men. All human beings, including LGBTQ plus individuals, deserve to live with dignity and respect for their rights and well-being. We will uphold any law, ordinance, and policy against discrimination to promote the mental health and well-being of Filipinos of diverse sexual orientations, gender identities, and gender expressions. In conclusion, given the premises I've mentioned, I again reiterate PAP's support of the fundamental rights of all people in the SOGI spectrum. In addition, we recommend continuing education of medical and mental health professionals to enhance their knowledge and skills in providing humane and evidence-based care for clients seeking help with SOGI-related concerns. Disseminating of research that addresses the needs and concerns of LGBTQ plus Filipinos and their families through workshops, seminars, and similar activities. And lastly, continuing dissemination of information on the importance of seeking out LGBT-inclusive and affirmative licensed psychologists for media practitioners and individuals who wish to get professional psychological advice on SOGI-related concerns. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Reyes, uh, also for uh, ending a bit early. So, salamat po. Uh, next, uh, I'd like to call to speak for the uh, Fellowship of Redeemed Sexually Disoriented Individuals, Mr. Cesar Buendia. Mr. Buendia, you have the floor, sir. Can you see me now? Not yet, sir. There, I will. I can, can hear you, sir, but not see you. Hindi pa po. Pwede pong buksan yung yeah, videos yeah, yeah. so we can hear I you. Can see me now. Yes. Can't see you yet, sir. Please open your video. Paki on yung video. Okay, 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 okay sir. You have the floor. Magandang yes, sir. Magandang umaga po. Umaga. Ako po si Cesar Bendia, kasama po si Ronnie Ventayen at si Kerubin. Kami po ay makakatawan sa fel uh, Fellowship of Redeemed um, Sexually Disoriented Individuals. Ito po ang aming position paper. Ang may kling talumpati ko ngayon ay inaalay ko sa alala na magiting na si Lyndon, Atty. Lyndon Kanya, na naging biktima mismo ng diskriminasyon. Sa isang hearing noong 2019, tinawag ang minamahal naming Atty. Lyndon na hypocrite, bigot, at purveyor of lies. Isang bagay na sobrang salungat sa katotohanan. Hanggang sa pagyawan ng aming kapatid, hindi siya kailanman nahinga ng kapatawaran sa ginawa sa kanyang ito. Walang siyentipiko ang makakatuto sa aming mga diskurso ngayon dahil bagat, bagamat hindi ka man psychiatrist or psychologist, kaming mga nasa fellowship of redeemed sexually disoriented individuals, ang personal na nakaranas ng buhay ng isang bakla o tomboy. At dahil sa sarili naming mga karanasan, naniliwala kami na hindi uulitin ko, hindi dapat ipasa ang soggy bill na taon-taon na lang isinusulong na maging batas. Ang aming mga dahilan, number one, ang panukalang batas na ito ay nakabase sa acronym na LGBTQI. Ayon sa aming karanasan, hindi masasabi ng pagiging LGBTQI ay likas or inborn. Hindi pinanganak ang isang tao na LGBTQI o anumang letang idadagdag nila sa, sa hinaharap. Ang sexual preference ay hindi inborn. Ito ay isang 
acquired taste. Uulitin ko po, acquired taste. na develop yan through the years. Walang basehan sa physiology na isang tao ang LGBTQI mula sa kapanganakan. Kahit, kahit pa magpa-sex change ang isang tao, kahit pa mag-bees, lalaki, ang isang babae, or vice versa, ang kanyang kasarian sa kapanganakan ay mananatili pa rin dahil ang kanyang DNA ay hindi magdagbabago. Walang gay or lesbian gene. Ang LGBTQ ay walang iba kundi isang de- deklarasyon lamang ng paniniwala ng isang tao na galing sa kanyang isip. Hindi pwedeng gumawa ng batas base lamang sa deklarasyon ng nasa isip ng, ng isang tao. Kahit pasabihin ng isang 12-year-old na, na siya ay 21 years old na, hindi pa rin siya pwedeng magmaneho, bumoto, pumasok sa nightclub o minom ng alak base lamang sa kanyang paniniwala na siya ay 21 na. Ang isang puno ng santol ay hindi mamumunga ng mangga kahit pa ipagsigaw niya na, na siya ay isang santol. Uh, na siya, siya isang mangga, santol pa rin ang ibubunga niya. Ang paano ka, number two, ang paano ka ng batas ng sogi ay hindi lamang naglalayong protekta ng isang tao laban sa diskriminasyon. Ito ay nagpo-promote at nag encourage na ang isang bata, lalo na sa isang bata na maging isang bakla o tomboy o ano paman. Patunay, kapag tinuturo sa isang bata sa eskwelahan na maraming mga uri ng kasarian, napapaisip ang bata, ako ba ay bakla o tomboy o bisexual o transsexual? Pag naging curious ang isang bata, susubukan niya ang kanyang sexualidad. At pag pinag-eksperimentohan niya ito ay at magustuhan, Uulit, ulitin niya ito at pag nagagawian na niya ito, paniniwalaan na niya na siya ay likas na gano'n na nga. At pag naniwala na ang isang bata na siya ay gano'n na nga, makukulong na siya sa paniniwala na siya ay gano'n na nga. Hindi ba child abuse na maituturing ang pagsaksak sa mura at maselang utak na isang bata ang sistema ng paniniwalaan ito? Kaming mga nasa Fellowship of Redeemed Sexually Disoriented Individuals ay dati na rin nalinlang sa paniniwala na kami ay LGBT. Pero natanto namin na hindi pala totoo na kami ay LGBT. Nagbago kami dahil nagbago ang aming paniniwala. Patunay yan na hindi kami pinanganak na LGBT, etc. Dahil kung pinanganak kami na dinisenyo at dinisenyo bilang sexually disoriented ng Diyos, hindi sana kami binago ng Diyos. Marami sa amin ang dati, ang number four, number four, marami sa amin, ay dati naging depressed at suicidal at hindi kami nagkakaroon ng artika hindi kami nagkaroon ng depression dahil lamang sa discrimination naniniwala kami na excuse me po depressed sandali na lang ma'am Bidia. opo kasi limang minuto na po so kung pwede niyo na pong uh, i-enumerate yung last two points ninyo para ano matapos na rin uh, ano five na? minutes na po Mr. Buendia so kung pwedeng opo, i-enumerate na lang, na lang po. po yung huling dalawang punto niyo Oh, para matawag ko po yung mga susunod. Salamat. Maniniwala kami kaya nagiging depressed at suicidal ng isang bakla ay hindi dahil nilalait kami ng lipunan. Patunay ang ilang sa amin, nung nagladlad, tinanggap at niyakap kami ng mga tao sa paligod namin. Pero kahit natanggap kami, naging depressed at suicidal pa rin kami. Ang marami sa amin. Ang ugat ng aming depression ay dahil sinasalungat namin ang original na disensyo ng Diyos sa aming buhay. Sino man ang sumalungat sa disenyo ng Diyos at makaranas ng malalim na pagkakalito at, pagka, ay, at pagkakabalisa. Para kang isang kantang sintunado, para kang sapatos na pangkana na pinipilit na isiksik sa pangkaliwang paa at, at vice versa. At vice versa. Bakit may double standard? Gusto niyo hayaan ang isang... Mr. Bendia, paki-wrap up na po yes. kasi marami pa po tayong tatawagin. Last, last point na lang, ma'am. All right. Bakit may double standard? Gusto niyo hayaan ng isang transsexual na pumasok sa CR ng mga babae pero okay lang sa inyo na magulat na lang biglang isang maliit na batang babae na may kasama na siyang isang lalaking hindi niya kilala sa loob ng girl CR. Paano kung biglang magbago ang isip ng transsexual at biglang mag siya sa loob ng CR na lalaki na siya? Hindi nyo ba nakikita ang danger doon? So anong susunod? Mga mga male na preso ay ililipat ba ng mga transsexual male na preso ay ililipat ba sa piitan ng mga babae? Ganon din ba ang mga rules sa magiging dormitoryo? Papakilala ko ngayon sa inyo si Ronnie Bantayan na siyang nakaranas ng ng ano ng ng mga yan. Hello po. Ako Mr. Si Buendia. Ronnie. Sir Ronnie, sorry Apo. po. 
kailangan ko na po uh, tapusin muna yung presentation okay, last ng point fellowship. Na lang po talaga. Uh, last point talaga po, no, pinag-exit no, so, talaga namin ito. Kailang no, I'm vital sorry. po na makita ang medical Mr. Uh, repercussions Buendia. ng ano. Mr. Buendia. No, no, no. Mr. Buendia. No, no, no. Sorry. Uh, yung mga nauna po natin tagapagsalita ay ginalang po yung uh, pinigay na tiglimang minuto sa unang presentasyon. Galangin po natin iyon. Pwede pong magpatuloy Bang mamaya. Last point na lang po. No, 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 Mr. Po Buendia. Eh. No, 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 Mr. Buendia. Paki, please, paki uh, galangin at sundin yung sinasabi ngayon ng chair. Tatawagin ko na po ngayon yung susunod na resource person at muli paalala sa lahat, ano po, bilang paggalang naman sa isa't isa, tiglimang minuto sa unang presentasyon. Okay. So ngayon, tatawagin ko po mula sa Rainbow Rights Philippines, Attorney Jazz Tamayo. Attorney Tamayo, you have the floor. Yes, hi. Good, good morning po, uh, Senator Lisa, and also to the other authors of the bill, including the other uh, um, uh, research speakers here, uh, whether on our, on our side or not. Um, we in Rainbow Rights, of course, uh, definitely support all the versions of the bill. And uh, we would like to um, to share that throughout the years now, it, although it has been 20 years or past 20 years that we've been waiting for for this bill to become law, we we would like to also acknowledge all the work that previous champions and all the advocates and activists uh, had has done no, before us. Um, reading all the Jazz, provisions. Yes, lang yung video nyo so we can see you. Uh, Senator, pasensya na po. I can't. I'm traveling <laughs> po kasi. Ah, all right, all right. Um, Please proceed. Yes. Sorry po, Senator. Um, and then, of course, we would like to acknowledge the fact that many of the provisions of all of the versions of the bill are products of many consultations throughout the years, throughout the decades. And uh, we think that most of the sides, whether pro or against, were considered in many of those discussions. And the provisions have been um, definitely uh, are with discretion and discernment. Um, in Rainbow Rights, for on most cases that we encounter, we always are very much grateful and happy whenever those areas actually have ordinances, local ordinances that have anti-discrimination purposes, because at least we have some kind of remedy or redress that we can provide to our clients. Because of the absence of the national law, usually that's really what's left for us to do. Um, uh, given that, though, we all know that the ordinances have their own limitations, for example, the territoriality, they cannot absolutely ap be applied to all of the areas, only in its jurisdiction. In the same manner, they're not uniform. There are some ordinances that provide for more penalties or more protection, while other ordinances do not have that. So therefore, whenever there are persons of diverse so GSC that come to us and ask for help, our first question usually is, is there an ordinance in your area? Or so that we can at least help you out. But if, for example, there would be a national law, then we can actually have a guarantee for most of the persons of diverse OGSE wherever they are in the country. So that's really the purpose. I think many times it has been argued that the, the law is somehow giving special rights to people, that it's, uh, it's uh, sort of like giving an exception to the general rule. But to be honest, if you read all the provisions, it's very clear that what it only promises is equality, that uh, the very same thing that other people who do not belong to our community enjoy right now, those are the things that are there in the uh, substituted bills or all of the proposed bills of the previous Congresses and even the, the ones at the floor today. So therefore, you know, um, as part of Lagab Lab Network also and uh, Rainbow Rights Philippines as organization, we're very happy that once again, it has been refiled, <laughs> that once again, we are here at uh, discussing it, and hopefully the the 22 years will end soon, no? that we can finally celebrate a national law that can protect people of diverse OGSE from discrimination in the in the workplace, in the schools, in uh, accessing public and private uh, services, particularly health as well, um, and uh, even in the streets, so and in the media as well. So with that, thank you very much to the authors and. Um, uh, looking forward to hearing all the other points. Thank you, Senator. Thank you very much also, Attorney Jazz, also for ending early. So, uh, ngayon po, gusto kong tawagin um, magsalita para sa Simbahang Kristiyanong Lumad, Inc. 
uh, kung na, narinig kong tama kanina yung pangalan ng spokesperson uh, Comsec, Ms. Hazel Aquino. Magandang umaga po. Naririnig po ba ako? Yes, ma'am. Naririnig po. You have the floor. Thank you po. Ako po si Hazel Joey Abino from Matig Salog Tribe ng Davao City. Babasahin ko po yung aming uh, paper. Um, Indigenous People's Position Paper Against Proposed Soji Bill, SB 139, SB 245, and SB 442. No to discrimination, no to Soji Bill. Please consider and consult the sentiments of the more than 15 million tribal and indigenous people of the Philippines to, on the effect of the Soji Bill to us should this be approved. We, the sign below, are only representative, represent, representatives of the 14 to 17 million tribal peoples of the Philippines. Sadly, millions of indigenous people situated in far-flung communities of this country who are only concerned for their daily survival are unaware of Soji issues. They are ignorant of these consequences should this be approved, such discrimination and injustice. The approval of Soji Bill will threaten traditional beliefs of, or, and cultural values protected by the Indigenous Peoples' Rights Act or the IPRA Law, Section um, 6, Chapter 6, Section 29, which provides protection of Indigenous culture, tradition, and institution. The state shall respect, recognize, and protect the right of ICCs, IPs, to preserve and protect their culture, traditions, and institution. It shall consider these rights in the formulation and application of national plans and policies. Many of our um, tra traditional beliefs are oral and unwritten but recognized by law. We are against uh, discrimination. This is an unfortunate reality to us being minorities. However, we survive generations of injustice, deeming that vengeance is in the higher, higher beings. Indigenous people are generally enemies in religion, supposing that everything has spirits in them that need an utmost uh, respect. Our people has reverence and great fear of the unseen world. When, clear land, when clearing land and farming for felling trees, or for example, blood offerings from pigs or chickens are made to appease the spirits. Bullying an animals or person with deformities, abnormalities, or sickness would invite punishment from these unseen beings. Harming an animal without cause or discriminating, bad mouthing, or insulting a person with abnormality or deformity will anger the spirits. These are unwritten sacred laws that are passed on from generation to generation, thus this since time immemorial. We, we agree on um, our Madam Chair, Senator Hontiveros, general provision on Section 4, communities vulnerable to discrimination and abuse on the basis of SOGSC or, uh, or SB 139, we found some parts cultu culturally insensitive and unrealistic as well. Since time immemorial, we define marital status or relationship status as, as union between man and woman only. Marriage is, marriage is sacred, thus we will hold on to this ancient tradition and, this, and teach this to our next generation. Furthermore, our chair, uh, Madam Chair, uh, diverse discuss, I will quote, in endeavor inclusiveness and equality so that persons of diverse so GSC may fully participate in everyday life without any fear, abuse, discrimination, and repaisal, and ensure that all persons, regardless of their so GSC, are able to fully enjoy the right to life, liberty, and property, as well as the equal protection of the laws, end quote. This proposal needs to be specific and culturally sensitive as well. To fully enjoy the right to life and liberty must be spelled out in detail. As indigenous people, we will, we will discriminate if this means or would lead to same-sex marriage, have, having men, men having sex with men or women with women or an adult with having sex with child. We will not jeopardize our people to the backlash from the spirit world. We believe that such action is taboo and will anger the spirit and bring curse to our land. It will, fam it will invite famine, bring sickness and death. Cross-dressing, for example, a right that this law would not impose would want to impose is also taboo to us indigenous people. Our traditional Clothes are sacred, just like what I'm wearing right now. It is desecrating for men to wear a women's clothing and for women to wear men's clothing. It will anger the spirits and will endanger our people. Imagine this: uh, the injustice this proposed bill will create when a tribal chieftain is in, condemned to 12 years in prison and fined not more than 500,000 pesos for castigating a homosexual male who came to a tribal gathering wearing a women's traditional dress or lesbian wearing a man's g-string. 
And lastly, um, Madam Chair implied not to discriminate against people based on their HIV status, um, health status, or medical history. This is impractical. Pre presently, the government is in response to WHO mandate required to separate those who are afflicted by COVID-19 ready to be contagious and deadly. In the same way that the government will protect all Filipinos from dreaded diseases like COVID-19, tuberculosis, HIV, and other transmissible and deadly viruses, we have also an obligation to protect our people by separating those afflicted with these dreadful diseases. The LGBTQ, unlike indigenous culture, is a chosen lifestyle. But like all other beliefs, religions, persuasions, and traditions like ours should not be imposed on others by not legislating a national law that is totally exclusive. Please, our dear public officials, please consider the dread this law should bring. Dagang salamat po. Dagang salamat po. Ms. Hazel, and I would like to reassure uh, Ms. Hazel and all our colleagues that indeed we're, we're trying to um, help build up a policy framework. So well noted your concerns about how the bill or these bills relate to the IPRA. Uh, kakapasa din lang po namin ang isang bagong batas strengthening the anti-rape law by raising the age of consent and expanding the protection against statutory rape. Kaya hinding hindi kino-contemplate nitong mga bills yung isang uh, inaalala na sex between adults um, and children. And syempre, bahagi ng policy framework na aming pinakakapahalagahan uh, ay yung implementation sa mga bagong public health laws katulad ng HIV and AIDS Policy Act. Alright, so moving on po, I'd like to call now to uh, present the um, uh, uh, position of St. Scholastica's College, Manila, uh, uh, my alma mater from kinder till high school, uh, Sister Christine Pinto of the uh, Order of St. Benedict. Sister Christine. Honorable Pinto. Senator Risa Taveras, Chair of the Senate Committee on Women, Children, Family Relations, and Gender Equality, Honorable Members of the Committee, as well as I believe the Committee on Finance. Um, all the senators present, uh, my fellow resource persons, um, ladies and gentlemen, um, a blessed morning to everyone. Uh, I am Christine Pinto, a member of the Missionary Benedictine Sisters of Tutsing, Manila Priory, and president of St. Scholastica's College, Manila. And uh, I would like to first thank our Honorable Chair for giving me an opportunity to be present and share my thoughts before this committee on the Soji Bills uh, subject for this discussion. My context is that of being an educator and administrator of a Catholic educational institution, which is a women's college founded in 1906 and has opened its doors in the past years already to male students. So the Second Vatican Council's Gravissimum Educationis, it is Declaration of Christian Education, documents the fundamental principles of Christian education promulgated by the Synod. According to the Synod, True education aims to give people a formation which is directed towards their final end and the good of the society to which they belong and in which, as adults, they will have to share their duties, they have their shared duties to perform. And the Code of Canon Law on Catholic Education explicitly states that since true education must strive for complete formation of the human person, that looks to his or her final end, as well as to the common good of societies. Children and youth are to be nurtured in such a way that they are able to develop their physical, moral, intellectual talents harmoniously, acquire a more perfect sense of responsibility and the right use of freedom, and are formed to participate actively in social life. It is then a matter of social justice for school communities to create a teaching and learning environment that will allow all students to develop into fully integrated persons, physically, emotionally, morally, spiritually, and intellectually. And I believe that it's not just for Catholic schools, but all educational institutions have to be intentional in creating an environment where the emotional safety and self-esteem of all young people can be nurtured. This was a uh, said very well by Dr. Reyes no, of the Psychological Association of the Philippines. 
So as a Benedictine school, we have embraced the teachings of St. Benedict in his rule in our ways of teaching, learning, and living our daily lives in what we call the School of the Lord's Service. In his rule, St. Benedict applies the concepts of self-determination and self-realization in creating a community that is inclusive, a community that provides a welcoming space for self-knowledge and self-awareness of strengths and limitations, and the community that recognizes the skills, gifts, and competencies of each person um, and for the good. So the satisfaction of innate psychological needs for competence, relatedness, and autonomy enhances intrinsic motivation, self-regulation, and personal well-being. To have independence and freedom is, in the opinion of St. Benedict, the real understanding of self-determination. And self-determination happens in the context of a community. So as one exercises one's will in community, one takes responsibility for all the demands of the life. Self-realization, on the other hand, is um, the fact that people who are self-determined use a comprehensive and reasonably accurate knowledge of themselves and their strengths and limitations to act in such a manner as to capitalize on this knowledge. So self-knowledge and self-understanding forms through experience with an interpretation of one's environment and is influenced by the evaluations of significant others, reinforcement and attribution of one's own behavior. So this life process can only happen if one is given the opportunity to be included in a community in the first place. So the LGBTQ plus community has grown. There are those who have taken that big step to come out and embrace their sexual orientation, their gender identity, and chose to be free to relate with others as they are. But there's still no question that there are those who have chosen to remain to be silent for the cause of self-preservation, protecting themselves from being discovered. So those who choose to come out in school or even those who are perceived to be different can either find themselves tolerated, humiliated, ridiculed, reje rejected, or alienated. So Catholic faith values the intrinsic human dignity of each person, and a Catholic education institution must be a place where each and one can encounter the unconditional love of God who has created all persons in God's image and likeness. Pope Francis, when asked if he approved of homosexuality, if he approved of homosexuality, he replied with another question. Tell me, when God looks at a gay person, does he endorse the existence of this person with love or reject and condemn this person? We must always consider the person. So in recognizing the unique challenges faced by individuals who identify themselves with the LGBTQIA+, we then work towards creating a welcoming, safe, and supportive learning and living environment that will allow all to develop into fully integrated persons. It is still important that a space or environment is created where one has the opportunity to grow as a whole person with a strong sense of self-worth and self-respect. It should begin in our schools for what happens to our young people now will definitely have an impact on how they go through their lives even beyond the classroom and will most likely determine the reality and outcome of their adult life. Our state policies provide that state values the dignity of every human person and guarantees full respect for human rights. It recognizes the vital role of the youth in nation building and shall promote and protect their physical, moral, spiritual, intellectual, and social well-being. It is also said that the Congress shall give highest priority to the enactment of measures that protect and enhance the right of all the people to human dignity and education mandates for the state to protect and promote the right of all citizens to quality education at all levels and shall take appropriate steps to make such education accessible to all. So may these principles enshrined, I'm on the last line. Salama po, sister. Above. So may these principles enshrined in our constitution be a reality, not just in paper, but in the lives of people that have long been unheard and recognized, silenced, and made invisible in our society, that in all things, God may be glorified. Thank you very much. Marami salamat din po, sister. Ad maiorem Dei Gloria. Um, 
And now, Po, I'd like to call next for uh, the Un United Church of Christ in the Philippines, UCCP, ang National Program Coordinator ng Community Ministries. Si, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, yes, I'm so sorry. Before I call you, Sir, Mr. Marasigan, um, I'd like to call for the Davao Region Evangelical Association Ministers or DREAM, uh, Bishop Hurley Montes, Chair, uh, President of DREAM. Bishop, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam, uh, Madam Chair, for this opportunity. I am uh, Bishop Hurley Montes, uh, the Chairman or President of uh, DREAM, Davao Region Evangelical Association of Ministers. The major reasons why we oppose the Suji S bill, uh, Senate number uh, bill uh, number 139 or Suji S C Equality Act, because they have provisions that are harmful to our number one freedom of religious expression. Uh, number two, Suji will curtail the authority of parents over their children. Number three, our way of life as a nation and the youth of the next generation. Let me explain further. Number one, Soji Bill will pro prohibit our full uh, preaching of God's word under SB 139, section five, under discriminatory practices. Letter M, engaging the public speech meant to uh, shame, insult, vilify, or which uh, trends uh, or tends to incite or normalize the commission of discriminator practices against person of diverse SOGSC and which acts of practices in turn intimidate then or result in lose of their self-esteem. The public preaching of the Holy Bible, whether inside the church or in public places, is part of public speech. Therefore, pastors, priests, and ministers of the gospel will uh, viol will be violating the provision simply because they obeyed God and teach the Bible. This is a direct uh, assault of our uh, religious freedom, but more so a direct attack of the teaching of the Bible, if not to God himself, in the name of anti-discrimination. And quoting the Bible and St. Peter himself with regards to the law, men, uh, law of men that hinders the uh, direct uh, preaching of the word of God, they were uh, pre uh, tempted to preach the truth of the scripture for human authority. That is Acts chapter nine, 5, verse 9, 29. Number two, Suji will uh, limit the authority of the parents over their children. It is clear in paragraph P under section 5 states that preventing that a child under parental authority, custody, and guard harm against the child or by causing mental or emotional suffering of the child through intimidation, harassment, public uh, ridicule, uh, or humiliation, repeated verbal abuses or uh, other similar means or general uh, commit any act of omission prejudicial to the welfare and interest of the child as a result of bias against so GSC of the child. And while the bill limits parental uh, uh, authority under Section 5, Paragraph P of uh, Senate Bill 139, the bill will uh, require all government agencies to teach LGBTQ plus ideologists and to quote uh, education uh, campaign IEC, all government agencies and instrumentalities are mandated to develop and implement uh, so GSC uh, specific a gender sensitivity, education, information, discrimination. They shall endeavor to produce and publish information and education campaign materials on gender and human rights. Number three, SOGSC uh, Equality Act will indoctrinate our children with homosexual ideology. SOGI will require educational institutions to teach LGBTQ plus ideology, which can be a uh, platform for teaching kids about homosexual uh, uh, lifestyle and homosexual sex education. Number four, SOGSC Equality Act will legalize what we know is immoral. Homosexuality is sin and perversion and immorality. And that is con condemned by God in the Bible. 
Leviticus chapter 18 verses 22, Leviticus 20 verses uh, verse 13, uh, Romans chapter 10 verses 26 to 27, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse uh, chapter 6 verse 9, 1 Timothy 1 9 to 10 and Judas uh, uh, Jude 1 7 and etc. Uh, so GS uh, CQ or so GSC equality will legalize and uh, naturalize homosexuality. If homosexuality is legalized, we can no longer call it sin or perversion without the threat of punishment by the law. We cannot counsel homosexual to change. We cannot apply 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 17 to them. The power of Jesus to change them and is therefore uh, curtailed or limited. Number six, uh, Suji is uh, equality me, Bishop. Excuse yes. me, Bishop. Uh, Bishop, we, uh, five minutes have passed, so, but if you could enumerate yeah, your... I, I, I'll, I'll just go to directly to the conclusion. But yes, our conclusion you, is Bishop. allowing Suji uh, C Equality Act uh, to become a law will bring terrible consequences to the nation, families, churches, and non-LGBTQ uh, plus persons. For this and other reasons, I uh, listed here for lack of space, we vehemently and without uh, equity. Uh, vocation oppose the proposed uh, SUGS Equality Acts. Salamat po, Madam Chair. Salamat po, Bishop uh, Montes. And now I would like to call um, for the United Church of Christ in the Philippines, or UCCP, National Program Coordinator of Community Ministries, Mr. Johnny Ben Marasigan. Uh, Mr. Maras, siga naka-mute po kayo. Ayan, dinig na po. Okay. Yes, dinig na po. Please proceed. To the Senate Committee on Women, Children, Family Relations, and Gender Equality, to the Senate Committee on Finance, to the staff, and to my fellow participants for this Senate hearing, a liberating greetings for all of us. I am Johnny Ben Marasigan, the appointed resource person from the UCCP, I am the National Program Coordinator for Community Ministries where the program on gender justice and HIV AIDS is included. I am a loud and proud youth leader of our church and member of the LGBTQIA community. Though our church doesn't have official position paper on the three House Senate bills, I am here with all of you today to share our church aspiration in creating safe spaces wherein there is a justice, liberation, and equality. Last 2014, during the 10th General Assembly of the UCCP, we approved a statement on LGBT concerns entitled, Let Grace Be Total, which emphasized the nature of our church as an inclusive community of faith, as well as the church role in addressing the concerns of the concerned community. The church, particularly the UCCP, stands on a tradition of faith that has always been regarded as an affirming, welcoming, accepting, and caring community of the followers of Christ. This Protestant Reformed Evangelical faith tradition is rooted primarily and solely on theology of grace, not a theology of law or pure legalism. With, within this faith tradition, we consider the grace of God as an unconditional gift of God. All people, regardless of race, gender, nationality, political affiliation, or even religious conviction, are seen as one in Christ, are read, are all object of God's redeeming, healing, and reconciling love. With the gifts of God's grace that heals and accepts unconditionally, the gender minorities, therefore, can take their own place within the body of Christ and con can contribute their own gifts towards the ministry and mission of the church. They are to be considered and respected as legitimate members of the community and fellowship of the church and as such should be protected from the prejudices, discrimination, and even bullying by some sectors of the community. Looking back when I am studying in elementary and high school, I was always bullied by my schoolmates for being feminine and for not fitting on their standards or to be treated equally as a human. Sometimes, I went back home with several scratches and broken uniform. Akala ko noon, iyon na ang pinakamatinding pinagdaraanan ng lahat ng kapwa ko nasa minoryang komunidad. But immersing with them and listening to the struggles of many makes me realize that there is really a massive wound that needs to be healed the killings to our fellow members in the gender minority, the unreported or unprocessed sexual abuses, the never-ending physical and verbal abuses, the right to work in a safer workplace and with living wage, the right to access free healthcare without stigma, 
and the unbiased policies concern, concerning gender of a person. Maybe some of us are asking on why I am sharing the statement of our church and the struggles we are facing as part of the gender minority. It is because of this policy statement that is continuously developing. Our church, together with its church-recognized organizations, church-related institutions, church leaders, and all of its judicatories are well-guided to create an inclusive and safer space for all of its members and communities where our local churches are located. That would be the main reason on why our church is now dealing on gender justice, which is already integrated in our programs. With regards to the three Senate bills, we welcome the definition of discriminatory practices. Highlight, highlights are as follows. Advertising, producing, and publishing in the media and educational textbooks. Since some of our online and printed campaign promote stigma and gender stereotyping. Restriction of rights of the students on the basis of SOGSC, since records of discrimination and rejection of students in educational institutions or institutional activities were reported. Giving inferior accommodations or services shall be considered a denial of service or use of such facility or service. However, I wish that it will be included in all institutions and service centers. Public speech that intimidate LGBTQIA plus communities that results to intimidate them or result in the loss of their self-esteem. Engaging in public speech that promotes discriminatory practices. However, religious speech was excluded. But for me, it should be elaborated since some of the discriminatory practices happened in religious institutions and we are very sorry for that. However, there is a great need for education for all of us before and upon the implementations of these bills. Thank Excuse you for me, this Mr. opportunity. Ah, yes, please, con please Thank continue. Thank you for Senate bills and hashtag sana all ligtas sa komunidad kung saan sila naroroon. Maraming salamat po at magandang araw. Magandang araw din po at maraming salamat din. Sana all nga po talaga. Uh, salamat po. Um, at this point, uh, bago tayo dumako dun sa mga kinatawa ng mga government agencies at sa local government units, paalala lang po dun sa mga uh, resource persons na kailangan kong uh, putulin yung presentation in the interest of time. Paalala lang po na submit yung uh, position papers ninyo in writing. Salamat po. Alright, so let's move on to our government agencies. First off, uh, for the Department of Justice, uh, I'd like to call State Counsel Attorney Maria Lorena Calo. Maybe Attorney, you'd also like to comment on the earlier, some earlier points raised about the constitutionality, the legality uh, of provisions of these bills. Okay, Attorney Calo, you have the floor. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, good morning, Madam Chair, and to the all, and to everyone present in this public hearing. Um, in general, the department interposes no objection to the passage of a bill which aims to address a wide range of discriminatory practices on the basis of sexual orientation, gender identity or expression, or, sexu or sex characteristics, including providing penalties for their commission. The intention of the proposed bills to uphold the principle of non-discrimination resonates well with the declared policy of the state to value the dignity of every person and guarantee full respect for human rights. As to comments on specific provisions of the bill, we will be providing a position paper that would also include suggestions um, to improve and clarify some of uh, its provisions, Madam Chair. Salamat, uh, uh, Attorney Calo. The shortest presentation so far. And the committee will certainly look forward uh, to the uh, submission of the department uh, of the paper, including the proposed amendments to further uh, strengthen or improve the bill. Salamat po. Uh, moving on now. Thank you, ma'am. Moving on now to the Department of Health. Uh, let me see. Sorry, Comsec. Hindi ko na-catch yung buong pangalan nung magsasalita for DOH kanina. Who will be speaking? Oh, I'm sorry. There was a Mr. Kausa. Did I hear correctly earlier? Speaking I'm for the DOH. Um, yeah. Good morning, po, um, Beverly oh, yes. Ho. Yes, Ms. Oh, I'm sorry. Dr. Beverly Lorraine Ho, Undersecretary. Uh, of Hello, health. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You have the floor. Thank you for joining Thank us. Thank you very much, Paul. Um, the Department of Health fully supports 
um, the Senate Bills 139, 245, and 442, which seeks to protect the fundamental rights of all individuals against any form of discrimination based on sexual orientation, gender identity, or expression, or sex characteristics. The DOH recognizes the challenges faced by the Filipino LGBTQI plus communities by which these bills fulfill the rights set forth in the Constitution on equal protection. It, is, it shall also enhance the integration of gender and development perspectives in the implementation of health programs to ensure a gender-sensitive and gender-responsive health system. Globally, we know that the health outcomes of our LGBTQI plus individuals are poorer compared to that of the general public due to exclusion, barriers, and social stigma. In the Philippines, because of limited availability of related local data and failure to capture the needs of individuals based on their SOGSC, lead to inequ inequities in access to healthcare and disparities in health outcomes. We believe that the enactment of these bills shall reinforce the current health laws and policies, um, specifically the UHC Act, the Philippine Mental Health Act, Philippine HIV AIDS Policy Act, um, Responsible Parenthood and Reproductive Health Act of 2012 and the Committee on Decorum and in Investigation of Sexual Harassment Cases within um, as our institution, the DOH Central Office. Ma'am, we do have some um, more specific technical recommendations. I would prefer that we probably will just submit our official position paper uh, to not take up too much time, but um, we respectfully and are very, very grateful for the filing of these bills, and we look forward to supporting um, you and um, the, the committee um, to, to facilitate the passage. Thank you very much, Bob. Thank you very much, uh, Yusek Beverly, also for pointing out how these bills uh, may interact positively with the implementation of the universal health care law, uh, and also for highlighting um, that these bills partake in the spirit of the constitutional uh, principle of the equal application of the law. And I also look for the committee looks forward to the complete submission from the department. Salamat po. Uh, now let's hear from uh, the Department of Information and Communications Technologies uh, from Assistant Secretary Maria Teresa Camba. You have the floor, ASEC. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, ma'am. Yes. Can, could you open your video for us to see you? Okay. Uh, let me try. Okay. Uh, can I be seen now? Not yet, ma'am. Oh, sorry about that. It's all right po. Sige lang, please proceed. Um, the Department of ICT interposes no objection to the proposed legislative measures. As uh, we in the department also recognize the importance of promoting equality among all citizens, regardless of their SOGSC. We have actually prepared a five-page uh, position paper with our comments and recommendations, Madam Chair. And in the interest of time, this will be submitted to your office as soon as it is signed. Suffice it to, uh, suffice it to say for now uh, that uh, the ICT proposes that the measures will explicitly specify that the acts of discrimination uh, should also be, um, well, can also be present in online platforms. As technology changes, so do the means of communication among people. Hence, further safety measures should be put in place in order to ensure that Filipinos do not experience discriminatory acts online. And by doing so, not only will this benefit the LB, uh, LGBTQ persons, but all others made vulnerable by discrimination through online platforms. So we will submit our position paper to your office and we request that um, the comments and recommendations be included in uh, the transcript for today's hearing. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, ASEC Maria Teresa. And we'll do po yung pagsama nung uh, comments and recommendations sa inyong uh, position paper sa transcript ng hearing uh, ngayong araw. And salamat also for pointing out the importance of um, fighting discrimination also in the online space. As we uh, just did uh, all together recently dun sa pagpasa ng anti-OSAIC law, yung anti-online sexual abuse and exploitation of children law. So maraming salamat po, ASEC. Uh, now, uh, well, I, I would just like to note 
that um, the Department of National Defense through Ms. Natalie Labang uh, will no longer uh, present their uh, position paper or make a presentation but just submit their position paper in writing. So marami salamat po sa DND para doon. So at this point then, I'd like to call on uh, uh, the resource person from the Armed Forces of the Philippines, Chief of the Plans and Program Branch of the GAD, uh, Major Rachel Facunla. You have the floor, ma'am. Is Major Facunla online or yung bang presentation ng AFP covered na po ng presentation ng DND? Ganun po ba, Comsec? Mom, she's online. She's online. All right. Major Facunla, will you be making a presentation this morning? Right. If uh, Maybe not, but if ever, balikan ko na lang si Major uh, Facunla mamaya. So moving on for now, um, I'd like to call from the Philippine Commission on Women, the Senior Gender and Development Specialist, Ms. Clehenia Aurora San Juan. Uh, thank you, po, uh, Senator Isa. Um, just like the DOJ and the rest of the uh, agencies presented, the Philippine Commission on Women oppose, uh, don't have any objection to the bills, although we would like to forward the following recommendations for the enhancement of the consolidated version of the bills for the committee's consideration. Uh, first, um, uh, we would like to uh, recommend to include in the discriminatory practices provision the refusal for a student or trainee to participate in sports activities or hold positions in paramilitary organizations of educational or training institutions on the basis of of a person, so GSC. Um, we would also like to uh, recommend to add a provision on the crafting of guidelines on uh, a gender sensitive and inclusive approach in assisting victims of so GSC based discrimination and abuse, and b um, guidelines on gender sensitive treatment of LGBTIQs arrested and detained for criminal and civil offense. Um, on Section 4 of SBN 139 and SBN 245, uh, we suggest that the bill use the term persons with disability instead of differently abled. Uh, this is to align uh, with the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, to which the Philippines is a signatory. On Section 8 of SBN 139 and Section 7 of SBN 245, uh, this is on the penalties. The PCW suggests that community service be differentiated from attendance to training and exposure to the plight of the victims, as community service is defined as unpaid work intended to be of social use that an offender is required to do instead of going to prison. So, uh, ang recommendations lang ng nam naman namin is uh, instead of rendition of community service such as in terms of, palitan lang yung in terms of, nagawing end. So, in rendition of community service and attendance to human rights education, etc. cetera. Uh, that will be all. Uh, we have um, other uh, recommendations, but these are the highlights of our uh, position. So, thank you po. Uh, salamat din po, um, Ms. Clehenda Aurora. And uh, the committee will also await the Thank you. Um, moving on now, I'd like to call the Commission on Human Rights, Development Management Officer Aaron Kayabdab. Madam Chair, good morning. Madam Chair, yes, good morning. Good morning. Yes, good morning. I am Attorney Twyla Rubin from the CHR Center for Gender Equality and Women's Human Rights. Uh, yes, of course, Attorney Twyla. The Commission on Human Rights as National Human Rights Institution and as Gender Umbud under Magna Carta of Women welcomes the first hearing of the Soji Equality Bill 
we are hopeful that this 19th Congress will be the Congress that will finally be able to pass a legislation protecting persons of diverse sexual orientation, gender identity, and expression from all forms of discrimination. In the past Congresses, the Commission has been steadfast in supporting the passage of this key legislation. We have stood with Soji Equality champions, allies, and advocates in stressing its urgency, even as we continue to document cases of discrimination prior, during, and even after the COVID-19 pandemic. This Congress, we will continue to support the passage of this legislation, even as we also support the passage of the Comprehensive Anti-Discrimination Bill. We are currently polishing our updated position paper for submission to this committee, and we also commit to submit copies of our studies we have undertaken through the years, studies that underscore the, and support the need to pass this measure. In 2017, we undertook a mapping of LGBTQI issues. During the Marawi siege, part of our situation are covered issues of LGBTQI uh, persons of diverse SOGI during the siege. In 2019, we undertook a situation or in LGBTI children. And during the pandemic, we documented stories of LGBTQI individuals and organizations. All these highlight continuing experiences of discrimination against persons of diverse SOGI SE the impact of discrimination, violence, and exclusion, including us against LGBTQI children, and the urgent need to pass this, this, this legisl legislation. We would like to share as well the responses of some LGBTQI children during our interviews on the impact of discrimination and violence. Their responses included feelings of being hurt, fear, trauma, stress, depression, loss of self-esteem, self-confidence, anxiety, loneliness, substance abuse, feeling of being unprotected and insecurity, and sometimes even suicidal thoughts. Jay, not his real, real name, a gay child from NCR, also shared how they felt when they experienced bullying in school, community, and in public spaces. He said, unworthiness, especially when your religious friend makes you feel like being gay is a sin and a sickness in society. It's like you become unworthy if there's something wrong with your identity. It's like you shouldn't live. That's how it feels, especially in my first year in high school, because it's the type of bullying that really rubs in your face. So I felt unworthy of living. Uh, we really need to pass this legislation. To end, we share a campaign we are currently holding to support the passage of Soji Equality Bill, Madam Chair. This campaign is called No More Missing Out. We call for the passage of anti-discrimination bill or SOGI equality bill because every time a person of diverse SOGI SE experiences discrimination, stigma, and hate, that person misses out so much in life, a life of dignity and enjoyment of a whole range of rights, the pursuit of happiness, happiness peace, and well-being. Thank you, Madam Chair, and rest assured the Commission will be with the SOGI equality champions towards the passage of this very important and urgent measure. Thank you very much also, Attorney Twyla, at para sa No More Missing Out campaign ng CHR. Very well appreciated po ng komite. So now I'd like to call on, uh, for Quezon City, the legal consultant of the QC Protection Center for Gender-Based Violence and Abuse, uh, also the Executive Director of Engender Rights, Attorney Clara Rita Padilla. City Office of the Mayor supports the Soji Equality Bill. It has been over 23 years since the first anti-discrimination bill based on Soji was filed in Congress in 1999. Meanwhile, we have lesbians raped by predatory homophobic men, transgender students forced to cut their hair short and wear clothes contrary to their gender identity, young LGBTIQ people beaten up by their parents and siblings, forcing them to leave their homes at a young age. These abuses lead to young LGBT people to drop out of school and high suicide rates. Many LGBTIQ people also experience difficulty finding work. They are told that they are not feminine or masculine. In 2021 in Maguindanao, an explosive device exploded at an LGBTIQ volleyball game with seven injured and one killed. Homophobia and transphobia have no place in our society where equality, non-discrimination, equal protection of the law and secular standards, separation of church and state, non-establishment of religion, freedom of beliefs are foremost. In 2003, Quezon City was the first to pass an ordinance penalizing work employment homophobia. In 2011, 
we set up the Quezon City Protection Center for women, children, LGBT survivors of gender-based violence. In 2014, we passed the Quezon City Gender Fair Ordinance with a clear mission to end discrimination based on SOGI. Vice Mayor Belmonte came up with the idea to pass an anti-discrimination ordinance or ADO. This political will to pass the ADO was crucial in the enactment of our Quezon City Gender Fair Ordinance. As a consultant of then Vice Mayor Joy, I co-drafted the Gender Fair Ordinance and we successfully passed for prohibitions on all forms of abuses based on SOGI and ensured to pass affirmative actions, including mandating VAUSI desk officers to handle abuses based on SOGI, mandating all establishments to designate all gender comfort rooms. We now have seven in the city hall. Designate PNP SOGI desks and health desks for LGBTIQ people. Mandating establishments to undergo SOGI trainings for issuance and renewal of business permits. Mandating trainings on SOGI, school, on SOGI in schools and workplaces. We came out with an IRR that allowed barangay protection orders for abused LGBTIQ persons and VOW officers to issue BPOs. But despite the passage of the gender fair ordinance, we still had a transgender woman who was disallowed to use the women's comfort room in a mall in 2019. A transgender man was brutally raped and killed in 2021. A transgender girl who was killed in 2015 while walking along a street in the city. I mentioned our experience in Quezon City because while ordinances are necessary, their reach is limited within the, con within the confines of the LGUs. And discrimination and violence based on SOGI continue to happen. Phobia and oppressive religious beliefs against LGBTIQ people are deeply entrenched in individuals, families, schools, and workplaces. Harmful gender stereotypes prevail. Many are unaware of the UN's scientific evidence that 1.7% of the population are intersex, or about 1.8 Filipinos are intersex people. This is why we need to pass the SOGI Equality Bill to ensure the right to equality and non-discrimination of LGBTI people. All forms of abuses based on SOGI are prohibited and erring individuals and institutions are penalized. Ensure affirmative acts to raise awareness on the rights to diverse sexual orientation and gender identities and provide opportunities and assistance to LGBTIQ people. Not passing the SOGI Equality Bill makes us all complicit to all the discrimination and abuses against LGBTI people. We urgently need the SOGI Equality Bill to be passed into law. We urge our senators lead the 19th Congress to pass the SOGI Equality Bill. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Attorney Claire. Not just for ending early, but also for um, pointing out another way to look uh, here this morning. Hindi lang ito tungkol sa uh, pagsulong ng mga pano kalang ito, pero ano yung price, ano yung cost kung hindi namin ito gawin. So salamat po para doon. Um, moving on, I'd like to call to speak for the Cebu City Anti-Discrimination Commission and Cebu United Rainbow LGBT Sector, Ms. Magdalena Robinson. You have the floor. Maing bunta kay natong tanan, mga nagkadaiya o patas nga manlulupyo sa atong nasod, no? Um, salamat si Gayon sa atong committee o sa, sa, sa atong senado para mahibawaan ang amuang uh, stand para sa SOGI as Equality Bill o mga anti-discrimination proposal sa ato ang kongreso. Uh, ako ako dahil si Magdalena Robinson, gikan sa Cebu United Rainbow LGBTIQ Plus Sector Incorporated. Uh, Maon ni ang position paper, paper, we again sought to claim our civil rights to equality um, of all Filipino citizens in this case, not to discriminate um, your fellow Filipino citizens, um, SOGI SC. We claim our freedoms to be who we truly are, um, our authentic selves in our society. So GSC is fundamental in our dignity and personal development. It is essential freedom of expressing our unique individuality. We emphasize our to our government and fellow citizens not to interfere or discriminate our right to self-determination, our self-autonomy. We decide for ourselves. We support the proposed bills on anti-discrimination that will provide a national standard practice 
code of conduct to all citizens to never discriminate and provide a legal relief of the cruel, violent practices to repress our SOGSC, our very individuality. We experience these cru uh, cru cruelties since childhood. We are condemned as immoral, sinful, cursed, um, tinatuguro ang sumpa. We are laughed upon, we are shouted upon, we are stereotyped as evil and menace in society. Please respect our personal privacy as we are um, ourselves. And please do mind your own business. Our SOGSC is not a, a public business. We ought peace and order in our interaction in all public spaces. Also, um, in the implementation of um, local ordinances such as in Cebu City and Mandawi City, discrimination still happens. And there are questions of uh, legalities, um, over right, uh, rights over other rights, such as academic freedom, as well as religious freedom. And having to pass a national uh, anti-discrimination bill will really clarify um, interventions from the state no? on, on, uh, on stances of providing legal relief on instances of discrimination. Thank you, Madam Chair. Salamat po, Ms. Magda. Uh, next, uh, I would like to call from the uh, Technical Education and Skills Development Authority, the Chief uh, TESD Specialist, Ms. Maria Linda Andrade. You have the floor. Or I'm sorry, is it Attorney Joyce Balong to speak? Uh, yes, Madam yes. Chair. Yes, thank you. On behalf of Attorney, Ma you have the floor. Yes, please. Thank please you. proceed. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. So good afternoon, Bo. Um, TESDA acknowledges the intent of the bills in providing a non-discriminatory environment to the members of LGBTIQ to help them maintain their status as members of the society, free from any unwarranted discrimination in all aspects of their lives. To bolster its commitment to discouraging any form of discrimination, the agency encourages more diverse and inclusive learners and graduates. Hence, we do not condone partiality on account of gender, sexual orientation, civil status, disability, religion, ethnicity, or political affiliation in considering the participants in any skills training and development. In addition, TESDA issued its own memorandum circular to use a gender-sensitive training curriculum in trainer's manual to achieve its goal of mainstreaming gender and development in technical education and skills development and to produce gender-sensitive TESD graduates. The agency also strengthened its adoption of the Quorum in Investigation, CODI, a committee within the agency that aims to investigate and counter any form of harassment in the workplace. In promoting the relevant human rights aspects in technical and vocational tra training, we view that TESDA could contribute to the objective of the proposed measures. Thus, this authority welcomes its membership in the proposed Interagency Council on SOGSC quality, as cited in Section 14 of Senate Bill No. 129. However, we would like to express our concern about the discriminatory practices under some sections of the bills, particularly on the use of establishments, facilities, utilities, or service open to the general public on the basis of SOGSC. While TESDA respects and upholds the basic rights of everyone, regardless of the SOGSC, use of these establishments, particularly the use of all gender restrooms, should be based on the basic principles of modesty, safety, and privacy. It is our stance that one's personal belief or self-expression should not serve as a justifiable basis to acquire additional rights, nor a reason to uphold a specific belief above all the others. On top of that, the members of the LGBTIQ community can enjoy the same rights, equality, and non-discrimination within the reasonable bounds of law and orderly society without the heavy penalties as cited under some provisions of the bill. Everything said here, Madam Chair, are reduced into a position paper, which we will be submitting to you. Well, thank you so much. Marami salamat din, Attorney Joyce. And yes, the committee will await the uh, complete position paper of TESDA. Salamat po. Uh, <clears throat> at this point, I'd like to call to speak for the Philippine National Police, 
the acting chief of the PNP Women and Children Protection Center, Police Brigadier General Arcadio Hamora Jr. You have the floor, sir. Sir, naka-mute pa yata kayo. Ah, sir, bukas na po yung audio nyo pero hindi namin kayo marinig. Hindi pa rin, sir. Hello. Ayun. All right, Ayun. sir. We can hear you now. Please proceed po. Uh, to our Honorable Madam Chair, uh, Honorable uh, Senator, um, Lisas Monteveros, ma'am, and to those uh, Honorable Senator present, good morning. Uh, ma'am, uh, the PNP fully support the proposed bill, Senate Bill number 139, 245, and 442. And the PNP welcomes the proposal to prohibit all forms of discrimination, marginalization on the basis of sexual orientation, gender identity or expression, and sex, sex characteristics. And however, ma'am, uh, on the proposed bill, uh, on the uh, uh, on the renaming of WCPDs to women, children, and person of diverse SUGIS protection desk, the PNP would like to request retention of the name as the WCPDs uh, have already been exercising investigative jurisdiction over other special laws extended to protect the vulnerable and the marginalized without regard to gender and sexual orientation, such as the Batas uh, Kasambahay, the Expanded uh, Anti-Trafficking in Person Act, the uh, Safe Spaces Act, and uh, uh, newer laws such as the USAID, uh, which is newly uh, uh, past laws, ma'am. Uh, should the Honorable Committee deem it necessary to rename the WCPDs, uh, perhaps uh, the Women, Children, and Gender Rights Protection, uh, maybe section or unit, uh, is more appropriate uh, and uh, generic to cover cases of violence against women and children and gender-based uh, discrimination and, bio and uh, violence. I would like to explain, ma'am, uh, uh, when it comes to the uh, WCP, this the Women and Children Protection Desk, uh, the name is Desk actually, but the, the use of, the use of uh, work uh, covers even the tra uh, trafficking in person uh, usai. So, kapag i-specific kasi natin, man, parang maging ano siya. So, that's why I even to capacitate, to capacitate the WCPD, instead, we will make it bigger. Kasi maliit lang siya sa police station, man. Naging desk lang siya, mami. And in fact, the function of our women's desk there are BAUSI, the, the violence against women, the violence against children, the violence, uh, uh, the uh, violence, uh, gender based violence, and we have this trafficking in person in the OSAIC, ma'am. So, parang nakita ko, kulang. So, in fact, I, there is, a, there is a, a move for me and my initiative to actually, no, for the PNP to give a bigger name yung desk natin. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you also, uh, General. Uh, yung concern na iyon, isa siguro sa pwede nating uh, resolvahin sa pagdating sa technical working group. Maraming salamat po. Uh, now, I'd like to call on, so far, no, our last uh, government uh, agency to present uh, for this morning, or and last government agency or LGU, mula naman po sa Civil Service Commission, Attorney Maricar Mon Cancino. Attorney, you have the floor. Attorney Maricar, online po ba kayo? All right, if not, pwede ko na lang balikan si Attorney Maricar mamaya kung sakali. Let's move on to hearing from uh, our non-governmental 
uh, groups uh, for, for today. Okay, so let's start with the uh, uh, resource person from the Bulacan State University, Bahagahari, Punong Raya, uh, Mix Keith Tuazon. You have the floor. Good morning po. Uh, am I yes. audible? Yes po. Yes, you're audible. Please proceed. Okay. okay. Wait po. Um, good morning, Senator Risa, and to everyone who's watching with the Facebook Live. So, um, I would like to apologize first for because our organization uh, failed to submit the position paper. But, however, our organization has no objection on this Soji Equality Bill. So um let me, let me just share a story po. Um Abul Subaghari was um um became an organization because meron pong ano there was this one time in 2016 na isa pong trans women na hindi pinapasok ng guard due to cross dressing. So uh she is just only um using or expressing herself or gender identity po or expressing herself po through clothes po or ina-affirm lang din niya. So, um, why is SOGI bill a need? So, it protects and safeguards the students, especially members of LGBTQIA plus community and to those people who are living in the Philippines po. So, and um, just to share another story po, um, af after a long fight, August 22, August 2022, the admin administration of Bulacan State University pinasa po ang Magna Carta of Students or MCOS which involves the dress code for students or gender expression po. Uh, this is very vital in the academy because gender expression can also be correlated to the confidence of the person especially for our LGBTQIA plus members in the university. And another story po, um, there was this one person uh let's um use the name gel and gel message our page page regarding the dress code and she is very concerned about her hair not to mention that it is what we call people's crowning glory um gusto po niya kasi mag-aral ulit under college of education so gusto po niya maging teacher but however um ang naging issue po is yung sa deployment po niya upon third year. So, the university itself, wala pong naging problema on the hair kasi po, dahil na rin po sa recently na pagpasa ng Magna Carta of Students, pero yun po sa school na pagde-deployan ni Jel, dun po kami nako-concern and gusto naman din po namin na hindi ipaputol or kung ano po, i-express niya po yung sarili niya. So, ayun po. Um, also, um, inclusive policies such as LG Equality Bill help improve students' mental health and productivity. Kasi kung hindi nila pinaproblemang madiscriminate sila sa school, mas madaling matuto o mas madaling makapag-aral. Kung baga, mayroong safe space for students na wala talagang iniindang problema na, okay, I can be who I am. And um, just... To share a background, Bulsu is a very friendly for people with diverse SOGI because of policies within the institution. So, ayun po, na, napasa na nga po ang Magna Carta of Students. So, um, very uh, open na po siya for uh, people with diverse SOGI. And, ayun po, students from our university may not experience as much stigma and discrimination because by policies protecting us. But I wish that they may be also case for all students in Philippines through the SOGI Equality Act. So in simpler terms, po, uh, this SOGI Equality Bill gives us members of LGBTQ plus community that, number one, there is hope. And number two, SOGI Equality Act protects the rights of children and youth. And last, SOGI Equality Act will help make our lives happier. So I really do hope that this Soji Equality Bill will be passed after two decades na nakatenga po siya. And ayun po, um, good morning po everyone. 
Good morning din, uh, Punong Raya, Mix Keith, at uh, Hari Nawa, mag, uh, magkatotoo yung pangarap mo na pangarap din po namin na mga authors uh, at allies nyo. At mabuhay no, sa bahagahari at sa bulso sa inyong universidad sa pagpasan yang uh, Students' Rights uh, and Welfare Code. Uh, all right, so ngayon, let's hear from the uh, Philippines for Jesus movement, uh, ang kanilang national president, Bishop Leo Alconga. Bishop Alconga, online po ba kayo? Kung wala, pwede na lang natin silang balikan mamaya. Okay, so let's move on to um, mula naman sa Bible Values Movement, Mr. Arnold Peña Serada. Ayon, Mr. Peña Serada, you have the floor. Good morning, Madam Chair, Sen. Teresa Ontiveros, and a blessed day to you. And good day to everyone, especially to our highly esteemed senators and fellow resource persons. I would like to express my gratitude to you, Madam Chair, for allowing us to express our position on SB 139. First, we would like to state for the record that the Bible Values Movement, BBM, and the Unified Ministerial Fellowship of Iloilo are against all kind of discrimination against all Filipinos. We their discrimination done to the elderly, women, children, PWDs, youth, and to those in the LGBTQIA community. Second, we believe that it is a fact that all Filipinos are equally protected by the Constitution and all our existing laws in the land. Among those are equally protected by our Constitution and existing laws, are the members of the LGBTQIA plus community. In connection to the Senate bills being proposed that we are discussing today, we the members and leaders of the Bible Values Movement and the Unified Ministerial Fellowship of Iloilo have several questions, Madam, and objections regarding the said bill. The three most basic concerns we have are as follows. Number one, is the Bible included in the list of publications that may bring stigma to the LGBTQIA community in the basis of so GSC? Under Senate Bill 139, Section 5, Letter A, under discriminatory practices, Section 5, Letter A states, advertising, producing, and publishing in the media, in educational textbooks, and other medium that has the effect of promoting, encouraging, and perpetuating stigma or enticing violence and sexual abuse against any person or group of the basis of Suji SC. You know, Madam, there are certain verses in the Bible that addresses and opposes certain lifestyle, even those in the basis of Suji SC. And if those verses in the Bible are mentioned in public preaching, church sermons, and the likes, does the bill imply that the Bible should no longer be used or read since it may possibly bring stigma? The long and established religious freedom then that is practiced and enjoyed by the Filipinos will be directly put in question since most of the Filipinos believe in the authority of the Bible as the basis for morality, standards, and lifestyle. The second question is, will transgender men be accepted in all boys' school and vice versa for a transgender woman be accepted in an all-girls school if the said bill will be passed? Again, the long-established right of the educational sector will suddenly not be honored or respected anymore and totally be disregarded if this bill will be approved into law. In addition, Will these bills, if approved into law, also pave way for transgender athletes to join in the gender category they would want to join or prefer? Take 
For example, Leah Thomas, who was born a male originally named William Thomas, but later on became a transgender woman and joined the women's category, college swimming, and eventually became the swimming champion. In the U.S. today, because of the Suji law, men can transfer to women's sports on the basis of Suji. Will this be the future of Philippine sports? Where a person who identifies herself as a woman, although born as a man, can just transfer from one gender category to the another? Hindi po ba, Madam Chair, at ating mga fellow resource speakers, na maging mukhang kawawa ang ating mga Filipina atlet kapag ganito po, na ang isang ipinanganak na lalaki ay pwedeng lumipat sa women's category? Is that the truest sense of discrimination and unfairness? We all know that men are stronger than women, biologically speaking, in terms of muscles and strength and bone structure. We're not getting ahead of ourselves. We're simply showing facts that are already happening in countries where this bill has been approved and became an unfair law. These are honest and relevant questions that we should ask while the bill is still being deliberated. Thirdly, and the last, is this bill really necessary? Don't we have enough always, a loss I mean, already to protect everyone de la Cruz in whatever gender or sexual orientation they identify with? It puts into question the very foundation of our laws, Madam Chair, and beloved fellow resource persons, we all believe that everyone must be treated equal. All fundamental rights of a person, regardless of his or her ethnicity, social class, religious affiliation, or gender identity, are already enshrined in our existing laws. Violation of such rights will be penalized accordingly. To enact another law that upholds one sector's perceived right over the rights of the other people who do not belong to that sector is simply, we believe, unfair. And in fact, equally discriminatory. It will be a law of preferential rights. A class legislation. Let us remember, as I close, Madam Chair and fellow you know, resource speakers. Freedom from discrimination is worthy pursuit, but in pursuing such, no other sector must consequently be discriminated against or affected drastically. Most of all, God and his word, the Holy Bible, must never be out of the equation because the Bible has a remedy for the identity crisis. Thank you, good day, and God bless, Madam Chair. God bless you too, Mr. Peña Serrada. Salamat man. Also for bringing up uh, related fields that advocates of the SOGI equality and anti-discrimination bills have been able to turn our attention to recently. Halimbawa nga po yung best practices models about sports. Uh, kung saan sa iba't ibang mga bansa rin, sports authorities have addressed uh, this matter of non-discrimination and SOGI equality in ways that are practicable, uh, that benefit the athletes, and uh, that, like our bills, we believe, are necessary uh, to advance uh, human rights, not just in the field of sports, but uh, in all in all fields. So, muli, uh, salamat, uh, saliwat, salamat, salamat, uh, Gid. Now we'd like to. You're welcome, sir. Now we'd like to hear from uh, uh, Mix Joyce and Isidro for the Polytechnic University of the Philippines, Casarinlan. Thank you, Senorisa, and thank you, um, fellow fellow resource personnel. Um, good good morning. Ayan. Um, I'd like to thank Senator Risa. Muna, first, for her constant championing of the bill. Wala talagang palya, laging um, 
nag nag advocate sa Senate for the SOGI bill and um for my fellow resource organizations and government units then who um who support the cause dahil it's important for the community to have allies in Congress and we could really use as much support as we can gather para sa bill na ito with that said here's the position of PUP Kasarian Lan on the SOGI equality bills filed in Senate and Um, PUP Kasari Anlan is an organization that aims to provide a safe space for people of diverse SOGI SC in the Polytechnic University of the Philippines, but it envisions a society where there is no need anymore for such a safe space to exist, a society free from bias, prejudice, and discrimination against marginalized groups, particularly people of diverse SOGI SC. As a society, PUP Kasari Anlan believes we have a long way to go to achieve this ideal. Ayan. The SOGI Equality Bill has been pending for more than two decades since its first filing, as we all know, and our organization believes that its passage is long overdue. Year after year, we witness discrimination against people of diverse SOGI SE that jeopardize their safety, endanger their lives, or worse, result in their deaths. In 2014, Jennifer Laude, a transgender member of the community, was killed by U.S. Marine Joseph Scott Pemberton. In 2020, he was freed, and today he still walks free. In 2021, Ebeng Mayor, a transgender man, was brutally murdered and allegedly raped. In 2019, Gretchen Diaz, another transgender woman, was arrested for using a public woman's bathroom and was subjected to harassment by mall staff. These are just some instances of discrimination among a long list experienced by people of diverse OJSC dahil pag binanggit natin lahat ng discrimination na naranasan ng komunidad, uh, matatapos na tong meeting na ito at hindi pa tayo natatapos. Yeah, with all that said, there are some provisions in the bills discussed that our organization recommends. These are the following. So first, ito, definition of terms. So gender non-conforming A person who does not conform to the traditional conventions of gender expression, for example, a born male person who has long hair and dresses in traditionally considered female clothing. Next, uh, a definition for non-binary, a person whose gender identity does not fit within the margins of the gender binary. Next, lived name, which which is a term that means a transgender, non-binary, or gender non-conforming Conforming person's self-chosen name. And lastly, dead naming, which is a practice in which a transgender, non-binary, or gender non-conforming person is called by their birth name, which they do not use anymore rather than their lived name. Other than these um, terms, we also recommend a provision detailing and, pro and prohibiting discrimination on the basis of gender expression on schools and other educational institutions usually targeted against transgender and non-conforming students and staff. Alam natin yung nangyari this year lang, yung sa cases ng tatlong students, ay apat pala na students na transgender women, si Nicole, Candy, Jade, and Dre. Hindi sila pinayagan magmarcha sa graduation ceremony nila dahil mahaba yung buhok nila, hindi sila nagko conform doon sa kanilang um, sex assigned at birth. So, hindi sila pinayagan magmarcha. Pero after um, after several lobbying na payagan naman, eventually approved in accordance with the Dep Ed Gender Responsive Basic Education Policy. And gusto sana natin itong i-prevent ulit in the future. And um, sana mas magkaroon pa ng clear provision sa bills natin about the discrimination of gender of transgender and gender non-conforming people sa mga schools and universities. Next, a provision discussing the legal changing of names of transgender and gender non-conforming people dahil wala tayong um, provision anywhere na pinapayagan ang mga tao who went who underwent gender reassignment um Who, who, who underwent gender reassignment or ayun, who transitioned to change their names, to change their legal names. Pinapayagan lang i-correct yung mga typo sa mga pangalan ng ating Supreme Court. And next, a provision mandating against the prohibition of intersex people from competing in professional sports dahil very dehumanizing ang... Um, ang ang um, ganito na nangyayari for intersex people ano yung testing yung sex testing which um 
for 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 women sports um pina validate yung femaleness nila para makapag-compete sila in women's sports next um a provision making medical transitioning services more accessible to transgender people dahil um ang medical transitioning ay costly mahal and um transgender people under income under income brackets that cannot afford such must be monetarily assisted by the government in their transition. Ayan. Just to conclude our statement, as a community, we are plagued by injustice and discrimination, and the aforementioned cases earlier prove that. It proves that we as a society are in dire need of the SOGI SE bill. If the law does not penalize people and institutions who continue to discriminate against the community, we will continue to be hurt and killed. We will continue to be ostracized. PUP Kasir and Land earnestly seeks the passage of the SOGI SC Equality Bill, and our organization will not cease to fight for this bill until it is passed. Thank you, Madam Chair. Salamat din, Mix Joyce Ann, at sa PUP Kasari and Land. Now, let's hear from... Um, Oh, Sen Padilla, meron po ba kayong gustong itanong? Or mamaya na po? Uh, ma'am, wala naman po. Nakikinig lang po ako. Mamaya na po, ma'am. Marami salamat okay. po. Mahal na taga-Pangulo. Okay po, Afwan. So let's hear now from um, Ms. Valioni Suiko ng The Lord Who Cares Foundation, Inc. Salamat po. Greetings from Cebu, the cradle of Christianity. Thank you for allowing us to be here this morning. Uh, founded in year 2000, the Lord Who Cares Foundation Incorporated directly served youths at risk to drug trade, child trafficking, cyber sex, sodomy, and other forms of injustice just to help feed their younger siblings. In 2006, Fieldworks identified essential components of interventions to mainstream them back stronger to the community or society as a qualitative action research to bring about social change we crafted holistic life preparedness program or hlpp this was under a memorandum of agreement with deped region 7 using tech book curriculum and gospel based emotional and spiritual support intentionally geared at improving their decision-making skills. Furthermore, HLPP simultaneously upheld the following rights of children. Right to be brought up in an atmosphere of morality. Right to protection against improper influences. Right to an education commensurate to their abilities. Right to live in a community and a society conducive to the cultivation of his desirable traits and attributes, right to access what they need to have a good life. Our teams in rural and urban test groups committed to modeling moral behavior, both in personal and professional conducts, created consistent upright environment, and rebuilt family commitment in communities. This resulted to good school performance and higher employability as inner wounds healed and decision-making skills transformed. In 2015, HLPP upscaled into Operation Lighthouse Keeping. Over 9,000 schools, church, government, and development leaders got consistent results, consistent results at the same as the same Bible-based modules are taught stakeholders modeled upright behavior and equip parents with the same courage of transformation thus giving appropriate biblical information wholesome environment and upright experiences doing life family and community building all provide a safe journey to vulnerable youths in these troubled homes some government or troubled times. Some government schools even had zero incidents of teenage pregnancy, gang war, and suicide. With the permissive behavior proliferated by self-expressions and stipulations that remove some moral boundaries in schools and other places, SOGI violates religious freedom. 
we petition that this Senate bill and all other related bills be repealed. As part of the caring Christian community, we equally condemn injustice again, in all forms against LGBTQ individuals. However, their rights should not infringe into children's rights to be trained, to have proper behavior nor contradict the state's mandate to make their surroundings free from improper influences. Please spare our Christian nation from possible disorder, for we are still not yet over with the old aforementioned wars of injustices against vulnerable children. We cannot afford to legislate anything that brings disorder for the sake of global self-expressions. Our, our national Makajus culture for over 500 years afforded us order, and we should allow God and his people to continue onwards till the coming back of Jesus Christ, as promised in Philippians 1.6. Massive gospel work are already manifest, manifesting good results in the many parts of the country favoring youth development. We should not be pressured internally nor externally to create any law that disturbs our flow towards national transformation. May our national and local leaders be God's allies. Thank you, Paul. Salamat po, Ms. Valioni. And now let's hear from um, Mr. Radem Kamlian Morados of Mujer LGBT. Sir Radem, are you online? Kung wala, pwede na lang nating balikan mamaya kung may oras pa. Let's hear from uh, Ms. Mela Habijan of Pride PH, uh, also Ms. Trans Global Organization. Ms. Mela, you have the floor. Isang mapagpalang tanghali po sa ating lahat. Maraming salamat, Madam Chair. Saludo po ako sa inyo ay pinagpipitaga ng Senadora Risa Onteveros. At sa lahat ng mga iginagalang na Senador ng Republika ng Pilipinas, gayon din sa mga kapatid nating kapiling sa pagpupulong na ito, isang magandang tanghali po sa ating lahat. Ako po si Binibining Mela Habijan, your Miss Trans Global 2020. I am a host, a writer, a content creator, and above all, an LGBTQIA plus advocate. And I would like to express my support for the passage of the SOGIES Equality Bill, as it would assure inclusion of all, especially in Philippine schools, our LGBTQIA plus siblings. Inclusion of LGBTQIA plus students and teachers in Philippine schools from basic education to colleges and universities has been a constant struggle here in the Philippines. In particular, the gender identity and gender expression of LGBTQIA plus people have been a point of contention. Sa kasalukuyan, hindi pa rin tanggap ng lipunang Pilipino ang mga taong kagaya ko. Sapagkat ang pagtingin sa LGBTQIA plus ay limitado at makaluma, hindi progresibo at hindi makatao. Para sa ibang tao, kamalian at hindi moral ang maging kagaya ko. Using the Bible to defend this inhumane and unchristian prejudice and treatment has led to exclusion and violent treatment of LGBTQIA plus people in the society, especially schools. This year alone, I met four trans girls named Nicole, Jade, Candy, and Dre. Muntikan silang hindi pa hintulutang makapagpakuha ng graduation photo at dumalo sa kanilang graduation dahil sa kanilang pananamit. Formal event daw po, dapat disente, nakakahiya sa mga bisita. Hahaba naman ulit ang buho. It pains me that school heads and teachers regard us as indecent and not fit for formal events. Fortunately, as the issue was amplified by the media, the matter became a conversation on social media, thus 
leading to their beautiful presence in their personal education milestone. Still, the struggle continues. Sa pagbubukas ng panibagong taong pampaaralan, marami akong mensaheng natanggap mula sa mga mag-aaral at gurong Pilipino. Their concern, as we go back to face-to-face setup, will they be allowed to come to school in the gender that they identify as? Marami pa rin mga trans nene ang puresahang pinagupitan ng buhok at pinagbihis ng panlalaking uniforme. Habang ang mga trans totoy ay sapilatang pinagpalda kahit hindi sila komportable. Dahil dito, nakipag-ugnayan tayo sa DepEd at CHED hinggil sa mga pulisiya ng pagkilala at inklusyon. The Department of Education has reiterated last September 2, 2022, the strict implementation and compliance of all DepEd elementary and high schools across the nation to its gender-responsive basic education policy that was enacted in 2017. DO32 series of 2017 recognizes and affirms gender diversity in the Philippines. And this policy aims to protect all students from gender-based violence and discrimination. It's a policy that promotes inclusion of LGBTQIA plus students and teachers. But of course... Implementing this policy is never easy as there are educational leaders, school heads, and teachers who are not embracing gender diversity, thus discriminating LGBTQIA plus students and teachers. Some of our LGBTQIA plus siblings are being forced and threatened by those people in power. As for the Commission on Higher Education, It needs a strong legal basis to further strengthen the drafting of a localized policy. They need a SOGI equality law to back up inclusive policies in all colleges and universities. Excuse me, Ms. Mala. Uh, Yes, please. If you're closing, perfect timing. Yes, ma'am. I was just about to remind. Thank you. With this, my friends, I am taking my chances to appeal to you to finally pass the anti-discrimination bill into a law that would assure LGBTQIA plus inclusion and recognition in the Philippines, especially in schools, highlighting acceptance of gender diversity, gender identity, sex characteristics, sexual orientation, and gender or uh, gender expressions. Marami sa mga LGBTQIA plus ang mahuhusay, matatalino at pinagpala ng talento at may mabuting kalooban. If you just let us who we truly are, we will become our best and we can make vital contribution to our beloved Philippines. At walang mali sa aming pagkatao. Tapos pusong pasasalamat po. Tapos pusong pasasalamat din, Miss Mela. Now, let's hear from... Uh, Lagablab LGBT Network, its Secretary General, Mr. Jap Ignacio. Okay. Good morning, po. Good morning, Actually, Jap. Um, I think yes. Attorney Jazz already shared a part of our position paper. Pero yon. Um, good morning, po, sa lahat. Um, of course, Senator Isa Antiveros for always being with us. Um, si Senator Robin Reno, thank you for being here with us today and hearing the um, sharing of um, different um, resource persons. <clears throat> also, salamat sa mga government agencies for um, sharing your support um, for the passage of the SOJ Quality Bill. And also to other resource persons who shared their support and opposition on the current version of the bill. Actually, the current version um, takes into account the sentiments of the advocates and oppositors Uh, from the two decades of discussion no, about the bill. Um, I'll keep this very short dahil marami naman akong kasama magsasalita rin. Um, pero isipin natin yung two decades. No? So, kung tao po yung measure na ito, graduate na po siya ng college. Ayan. So hopefully, <laughs> um, this 19th Congress, no, we give this um, bill a chance to be a reality. No? Uh, Alagablab LGBT Network reiterates our support Um, to the passage of this bill and um, yun lang po and hopefully um, we can hear from more uh, we can hear more support from you and good morning po 
Good morning din at salamat, Jap. Now let's hear from Ganda, Filipinas, its Executive Director, Ms. Naomi Fontanos. Ms. Naomi, are you online? Yes, I am. Hello. Okay. Good morning, yeah. Senator Lisa. Hello. Yeah. We would like to express our full support for all of the SOGSC equality bills in the Senate. But um, we just want to um, raise a few issues. For example, on penalties, we would like to add probably the phrase, um, appropriate damages shall be determined by the proper court. Uh, for the penalties under the SOGI SC Equality Bill. And then on the Interagency Council on SOGI SC Equality, um, we are just wondering if the Interagency Committee uh, Council on SOGI SC Equality will repeal the Interagency Committee on Diversity and Inclusion created by Executive Order Number 100, Series of 2019. Um, the Interagency Committee on Diversity and Inclusion is currently tasked to develop a diversity and inclusion program for the national government. So we are wondering if, in case the SOGI SC Equality Bill passes, um, will this repeal the Interagency Committee on Diversity and Inclusion? And then on interpolation, we would just like to suggest for the Senate Committee on Women, Children, family relations and gender equality to probably devise a measure to ensure that the bill does not languish in interpolation for a long time. <laughs> this can be a rule made by the Senate itself that probably states that bills should be interpolated within a given period um, after filing or something to this effect. And then Sexual orientation, gender identity, and expression and sex characteristics are natural aspects of the human person. So in pursuit of the dignity of the human person, we need to respect a person's sexual orientation, gender identity, and expression and sex characteristics. Passing a law that seeks equality on the basis of SOGSC is a step in the right direction for our democracy that values the inherent dignity of our people. Thank you very much at maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Maraming salamat din, Ms. Naomi. Uh, unfortunately, we are not able to limit the time of interpolation of our colleagues. Pero umaasa po kami, uh, Nina uh, Sen Loren at Sen Mark, na mga authors, sa tulong, pakikipagtulungan ng iba pa naming mga kasama, tulad ni uh, Sen Robin na nandi rito, at sana uh, si Sen Bongo rin, na nakita ko rin uh, kanina dito sa, sa ating hearing. So, moving on, uh, to try to get as many of our resource persons to speak uh, until the end of our hearing this morning. Uh, mula sa TLF, Share Collective Inc., ang kanilang presidente, Mr. Ferdi Buenviaje. Ferdi, are you online now? Yes, ma'am. All right, you have the floor. <laughs> okay. Thank Please you open your video if you can. Yes, po. You have the floor. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair, and thank you to our uh, honorable senators who are here. Uh, uh, in a short but very sweet way, I would like to say that the LF Share fully supports the uh, Senate bills, all the Senate bills that are being filed in relation to such equality or such task equality. Uh, sa pananaw ng TLF Share Collective, kami, kami bilang isang organisasyon na uh, na involved sa usapin ng uh, HIV AIDS at uh, 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 human rights, ninawala kami sa malaking papel ng pagkakapantay-pantay ng lahat ng tao para matiyak yung full access sa kalusugan at sa servisyong pangkalusugan ng bawat Pilipino. Kasama na rito ay yung pag ensure na ang ating karapatan uh, bilang individual para express ang ating sexual, um, sexual orientation, uh, gender identity, gender expression, at yung pag-maintain ng dignidad ng ating sexual characteristics ay 
nagtitiyak na tayo ay hindi mailalagay sa alanganin sa pag-access ng tama at uh, tumpak na uh, servisyong pangkalusugan. It also ensures that uh, our mental health are, are, um, uh, are supported in our mental health as, uh, at, our, at, at our peak so that we become better citizens or we become better um, um, individuals or contributors to uh, the greater society. Uh, so sa pin ng HIV and AIDS, malaki ang papel ng hindi pagkakapantay-pantay sa vulnerability ng mga tao sa pagkakaroon ng HIV. Ang sex bilang isa sa pin na madalas ay tinatago at ililihim ay lalong hindi nakakatulong sa mga tao na discriminate Hanggat mayroong diskriminasyon lalo na sa mga persons uh, na, na of diverse gender um, expressions and identities and of sexual orientation. Hmm. Hanggang na tiling yung mga ganong klase ng uh, diskriminasyon, yung pagkakataon para uh, sila ay maka-access na mainam ng uh, serbisyo at mas maging bukas sa uh, pag-access ng serbisyo sa HIV AIDS ay napabawasan. Kadalasan, uh, marami ang nahihiyang mag-access ng serbisyo uh, tungkol sa HIV AIDS dahil nahihiyang i-disclose ang kanilang sexual orientation o ang kanilang gender identity. Uh, malaki ang kaugnayan ng diskriminasyon sa access sa kalusugan. At Hanggat nagpapatuloy ito, gaya nga sinabi ko kanina, hindi tayo maging fully, uh, 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 fully healthy at magiging uh, uh, magkakaroon ng magandang uh, buhay bilang individual bilang mga Pilipino. Yun lamang po, Madam Senator, maraming salamat po sa lahat at uh, mabuhay po kayo. Mabuhay, Ferdy. Maraming salamat din. Now, let's hear from uh, uh, Ladlad Karaga Inc., Mula sa kanilang presidente, si Isang Semasyo Bakasmas. Paglit lang, madam, ha? Inaayos kong video. Ah, uh, sure. Gusto mong tawagin ko muna yung isa pang resource person, tapos balikan kita? Nakaready na po. Nakaready. All right, you have the floor. Okay. Isang magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. Mula po dito sa lungsod ng Butuan, lalawigan ng Agusan del Norte, Mindanao. Ako po ay si Isagani si Masyo Bakasmas Jr. o mas kilala sa tawag bilang Isang Bakasmas Acosta. Ang Pangulo ng Ladlad Paraga Incorporated at ako po ay isang transgender woman. Kami sa Ladlad Paraga Incorporated, isang aktibo at kilalang sec-registered LGBT organization sa Caraga Region ay nagpapahayag ng taus-pusong pagsuporta sa mga panukalang batas Katulad ng Sinit Bill No. 139 ni Senadora Hontiveros, Madam Chair, SB No. 245 ni Senadora Lauren Legarda, at Sinit Bill No. 442 ni Senador Mark Bildar. Malugod din kaming nagpaabot ng pasasalamat sa kagalang-galang na kumiting ito ng Senado. Ang sanligang batas ng 1987 ay, ay ginagarantihan ng karapatan ng bawat Pilipino ng pantay na proteksyon ng mga batas at ganap na paggalang sa mga karapatang pantao. Kabilang ang karapatan sa buhay, sa kalayaan sa pagpapahayag, at ang karapatan maging malaya sa torture, ngunit ang karapatang maging malaya sa kahit ano, ngunit kahit ang karapatang maging malaya sa kahit anumang uri ng diskriminasyon. Nakakabahala po, dumarami na ang mga ulat pag-aaral at survey na nagpapakita na ang diskriminasyon batay sa orientasyong sexual at pagkakakinlanlan o pagpapahayag ng kasarinlan o ang SUGE ay nananatili at ang mas mal as ang malala pa ay tumataas na bilang sa ating lipunan. Maraming members ng aming kapiderasyon ng mga lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender queer at intersex o LGBTQ+, particular dito sa rehiyon ng Karaga, lalo na ang lungsod ng Butuan, at ang mga lalawigan ng Agusan del Norte at Surigao del Sur ay may mga kaso ng pagkaharas, panliligalig at ang patuloy na lumalalang mga atake ng mga individual at kahit pa mga institusyon na kulang sa pagkikilala, 
pagpapahalaga at pag-unawa sa suji. Tulad na lamang ng buhay na tulad na lamang ng aking buhay na karanasan, kamakailan bilang pangunahing tagapagsalita ng Death Ed Bot 1 noong July 1, 2022, tila po kabalantuan na kahit pa ako ay inimbitahan upang magsalita para sa suji ay hindi ako nakaligtas sa diskriminasyon nang ako ay pumasok sa palikuran na para sa babae sa isang malaking mall dito sa Botuan City. Nilapitan ako ng janitress at hindi ako pinahintulutan sapagat ako daw, ay, ako daw po ay isang lalaki at sa halip ay tiniis ko na lang ang tawag ng kalikasan at ang mas masakit pa ang hindi pagkilala sa aking suji. Dahil dito, ang panukalang suji Bi- ang sugi ibil ay naglalayong tugun- matugunan ang mga alalahaning ito at upang matiyak ang aming mga kapakanan, hindi lamang sa aming mga LGBT community sa rehiyon ng Karaga, kundi maging ang lahat ng Pilipino sa anumang uri ng katayuan, etnisidad, kulay at paniniwala. Ang panukalang sugi ibil ay naglalayong tubulong sa pagkakilala sa karapatan naming mga LGBTQ+, upang lubos naming matamasa ang mga karapatan at upang mabigyan kami ng pagkakataon na pauna rin ang aming mga kakayahan at maabot namin ng buong potensyal bilang mga member ng lipo ng Pilipino. Habang tayo po ay nagsasalita sa hearing na ito, dumadami pa ang bilang ng mga kaso ng diskriminasyon at, at batay sa sugi ibil ang naitala at ang mas masikit pa, marami ang hindi naiulat at pinalampas na lamang dahil sa ibang tingin ay normal lamang ang mga ito. Nais ko pong kunin ang pambihirang pagkakataon na ito upang magsalita para sa aking mga sisteret at brotheret sa LGBTQ+. Taimtim naming hinahangad kami sa Ladad, Karaga, sampo ng aming LGBT community sa rehiyon ng Karaga, ang pagpasa ng panukalang batas na ito, ang Suji Ibil. Maraming salamat po, Madam Chair. Dagang salamat po, uh, Ms. Isang. Okay, Ma- marami-rami pa tayong magsasalita ha, mula po sa mga uh, advocacy groups, religious organizations, academe, media, at non, or rather national government agencies. So hinihiling ko po sa mga sumusunod kung pwedeng tig-tatlong minuto at least makapagsimulang magpresenta. All right. Opo, and the rest po makapag-submit na lang po in writing ng position papers. All right. So next po pakinggan po natin si uh, Mr. Benjamin Cruz or Benjamin Cruz mula sa Living Waters Philippines. Thank you, Madam yes, Chair. Yes. Yeah. The floor. Uh, we at Living Waters, a relational and sexual healing missionary organization, are against any measures and practices that discriminate the LGBTQI+. We are against any violation of human rights, whether they are against LGBTQI+, or any other people group. But we maintain we don't need another legislation to protect the LGBTQI+, based on the following five objections. One, the LGBTQI need acceptance and compassion, not legislation. Uh, They've been hurt by bullying, abuse, broken fathering, and they need acceptance and affirmation. The issue of sexual orientation, especially of homosexuality, is a relational or emotional deficit and not a sexual, much less a legislative issue. At its core, homosexuality is a sexualization of emotional needs. Chad Thompson, author of the book, Loving Jesus, uh, Loving Homosexuals as Jesus Would, and a man who struggled with homosexual feelings said that homosexuality needs to be solved through relationships. Uh, the second objection we have on the bills is, so this gender fluidity is damaging to our children. All the three bills give any child the right to choose his or her gender different from his biological sex. Since when have we given that life-defining decision to our kids. Choosing gender at one swim, both for kids and adults, lead to what is now known a global phenomenon of gender fluidity. This means a child can choose to be a male in the morning, 
female in the afternoon and bisexual by evening. He, she then can opt to adopt his phone or his computer as his or her sex the following day. This may sound ridiculous, but that's the trajectory of these bills if they become a law. Studies show such fleeting gender choice leads to death, literally, among those transgendered people who try to change their biological sex to the sex they desire are 20 times more likely to commit suicide than the non-transgender people. And it's also been noted that children who had expressed transgender feelings have over time spontaneously lost those feelings. The third objection is SOGI undermines parental authority. Under these bills, parents need to secure a family court order should they want their children to undergo any medical or psychological examination in matters related to SOGI. Also, in all those three bills, a parent discouraging his child to have a gender other than his biological sex consistent with his religious beliefs can be jailed. In our centuries of existence as a nation, never had we taken the right from the parents, the right to raise their kids. This is against Mr. our Cruz, constitution. Excuse me. Please wrap up, sir, because our three minutes are up, and then so I can call the others as well. Please All wrap right, up, sir. I'll just wrap it up and close. So my our fourth objection to this is it redefines marriage and family. Uh, although there's nothing in the bill that says same-sex marriage is okay, as what we saw in the U.S., uh, an anti-discriminatory bill eventually led to the Supreme Court of the U.S. deciding for same-sex marriage as legal. And the, our fifth objection is it impairs religious and academic freedoms. It will restrict or put in jeopardy a pastor who will preach on homosexual sex as sinful together with adultery or fornication of those who are straight men and women. We are being asked to protect those who prefer or feel or desire to be what they are not in reality. And when we give the rights of LGBTQs granted, what will stop other people groups like polygamists, pedophiles, necrophiles to be also asking for their rights. So in closing, i just like to quote Brother Eddie in a privileged speech in opposing Soggy Bill last Congress in 2019, that freedom from discrimination is a worthy pursuit, but in pursuing such, no sector must be consequently be discriminated against. Most of all, our Almighty God must never be out of the picture. Thank you. Thank you also, Mr. Cruz, and I wish to reassure uh, the organization Living Waters Philippines. Uh, this bill is, or these bills are in a totally different category from uh, the different filias uh, that were mentioned because we have been passing laws to protect our women, children, families, individuals from such crimes. And we wish to proceed uh, in a rights-based approach by taking positive action against discrimination and for equality. So let's hear now from uh, the Filipino LGBT Europe Foundation from its chair, Mr. Chris Santa Brigitte. Santa Brigida or Santa Brigida Cop. You have the floor, sir. Madam Chair, thank you very yes. much for the... In Magandang tanghali po sa inyong lahat. Magandang umaga po sa mga nasa Europa na nakikinig. Uh, Madam Chair, thank you very much for the invitation and the opportunity to be heard in this public hearing. My name is Chris Santa Brigida Cop, and I represent the Filipino LGBT Europe Foundation and the Filipino LGBTs living overseas, in particular in Europe. The Filipino LGBT Europe Foundation is an organization based in Amsterdam, the Netherlands, composed of Filipino migrant members, both LGBT and allies, living in different parts of Europe. We would like to put on record that we support the passage of a law that would prohibit discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, or sex characteristics. As a migrant organization, 
organization, we would like to highlight two things. First, Filipino migrants do not leave the country due to financial reasons alone, but also due to the lack of protection in the country. A lot of talented LGBTs left the country seeking an environment where they can thrive. If we want our talented LGBTs to stay in the Philippines to contribute to our economy and community development, we need to create this space, safe space for them so they will stay. Like every Filipino, we would like to live with dignity, pride, and respect. However, with no existing laws to protect our basic rights as LGBT individuals, we would always be lacking a sense of security and safety. For most of us, going abroad is a way to have an opportunity to live a life that is free from discrimination and oppression. Not everyone wants to leave our country, and not everyone who wants to leave has the means to do so. While we commend the efforts of municipalities, cities, provinces that passes ordinance uh, against discriminations for LGBT persons, these laws are still very much dependent on the local leaders. We need an anti-discrimination law that's it, that is enacted across the whole country. Second, many Filipino migrants have an aspiration to go back home, but the lack of legal protection stops many in our community from going back. In most cases, coming back home could mean giving up the rights and protection that allows us to grow and prosper while living abroad. For example, of those rights that we enjoy overseas, are the freedom from fear of being unjustly dismissed from work, as well as being denied services due to your sexual orientation or gender identity. Sexual orientation, gender identity, and gender expression are rarely basis for unjust treatment in Christian Catholic countries like the Netherlands, United Kingdom, France, and even in Spain, who brought Christianity to our country. And if such injustices occur, there are laws and policies that can be used to protect the rights of LGBT individuals. Madam Chair, because of this, the Philippine LGBT Europe Foundation supports the passage of the anti-discrimination bill. We believe that the passing of this bill ensures that we foster an environment of acceptance and a society where everyone can have their freedom to choose, the freedom to express, and the freedom to be themselves without being discriminated against or abused. Naway manaig po ang pag-ibig sa ating puso. Mahal po namin ang Pilipinas. Madam Chair, many thanks again for the kind invitation. Maraming salamat din, uh, Sir Chris. Uh, now let's hear from the Coalition of Concerned Families of the Philippines from Ms. Maria Desabel. Ms. Maria, are you online? Okay, if not, uh, let's move on, please, to hear from the UP Gender Law and Policy Program, Sir Hendrix Bongolan. Uh, magandang araw po sa ating lahat. Isang karangalan na maimbita sa pagdinig na ito. Uh, nais ko lamang po na balik-balikan no, na ang ating pinag-uusapan ay tungkol sa batayang uh, karapatang pantao at pagkapantay-pantay para po sa ating lahat to. Babasahin ko ang portion ng aming uh, position paper highlighting the legal framework to which this law should be or this bill should, should be passed. So, a legislation catering to the protection of fundamental human rights and dignity of persons of diverse SOGI SC is long overdue. The rights of persons of diverse SOGI SC have long been recognized by international human rights treaty bodies, including the Charter of Fundamental Rights of the European Union and the American Convention on Human Rights. As a state signatory to many international right, uh, rights instruments, the Philippines is under a legal obligation to protect and accord full, pro full respect to the fundamental human rights of every person, regardless of their SOGSC. No less than the 1987 Constitution likewise mandates the state to value the dignity of every human person and guarantee full respect for human rights. In Ang Ladlad LGBT Party versus Comelec, the Supreme Court ruled that protection of laws must be afforded to all citizens, regardless of class, such that laws of general application should apply with equal force to persons of diverse SOGSC. 
in Falses versus Civil Register General, the Supreme Court recognized the need to empower and uphold the dignity of the LGBTQIA community, considering the history of erasure, discrimination, and marginalization of the LGBTQIA community, and ruled that the 1987 Constitution is capable of accommodating a contemporaneous understanding of sexual orientation, gender identity and expression, and sex characteristics. Over the last 20 years, in all regions of the world, an increasing number of jurisdictions have introduced protection against discrimination on the grounds of sexual orientation, gender identity and expression, and sex characteristics. The research of the International Labor Organization shows a clear trend at the national level to recognize the existence of discrimination, harassment, prejudice, and violence against persons of diverse SOGSC, and to take steps and adopt measures to address them. Legal reforms in different jurisdictions have included the criminalization of same-sex sex, sexual acts and practices. Despite the unequivocal recognition and protection of the fundamental human rights of all persons of diverse SOGSC in both domestic, domestic legislation, in international law, and even in our existing jurisprudence, numerous cases of discrimination and hate crimes still exist in the Philippines. In life, Bongolan, excuse me, I'm sorry, but our three minutes are up. Would you kindly wrap up for the committee? I will have my last sentence. Uh, Thank you. In light of all this, the GLPP, in partnership with various SOGI SC policy experts, advocates, stakeholders, and organizations, strongly urges the 19th Congress to immediately pass the SOGI Equality Bill. Thank you, Po. Salamat sa pagkakataon. Salamat din po, Mr. Bongolan, at salamat uh, sa UP Gender Law and Policy Program. Uh, ngayon, I, I'll have to use the last three minutes uh, to please request uh, the resource person from the Department of Labor and Employment to speak, uh, Ms. Mercy Apurado. Yes, uh, Madam Chair. Thank yes, you so much and good afternoon to everyone. Uh, the Department of Labor and Employment supports the purpose of these proposed measures which seek to address all forms of discrimination, marginalization, and violence on the basis of sexual orientation, gender identity or expression, or sex characteristics or SODSC. Now, the goal works toward the protection and promotion of the rights and welfare of all workers, including those who, with uh, SODSC. For years now, the DOLE ensured forms of discrimination are prohibited in the workplace. This is an opportune time to further strengthen DOLE's trust in ending discrimination in the workplace, including those on account of SOGSC. Furthermore, the department's policies and programs are aligned with the ILO Declaration on Fundamental Principles and Rights at Work of 1998 and International uh, Labor Convention Number 190 or the Violence and Harassment Convention 2019 in Article 5, which provision include the elimination of discrimination in respect of employment and occupation. Now, in the interest of time, I will not mention our spe uh, specific comments as well as, uh, as uh, we will or have already submitted it to the committee. Now, uh, DOLE will continue to support the measures that seeks to eliminate all forms of discrimination in the workplace. The stiffer penalty for the violation of this proposed measure may serve as a strong deterrent to commit discriminatory practices. DOLE will also commit to support the work of the committee by ensuring our attendance and providing technical inputs or comments to the proposed measures, particularly uh, to the provisions that are within the those area of expertise. That's all, Madam Chair, and thank you. Salamat din po, Ms. Mercy. Uh, now, before I ask uh, uh, Sen Padilla and other senators who are here, if uh, they have any questions to ask, uh, may I just apologize na hindi ko na po natawag uh, ang galang Philippines.
ang Pantay, ang Discovery House Montessori of QC, uh, ang uh, 1197 DXFE, FEBC from the media at pati ang DepEd uh, for lack of time. But could I please ask uh, those individuals and organizations, pati po yung mga tinawag ko kanina na hindi online, to uh, just please do submit uh, your position paper to the committee. So at this point in time, uh, Sen. Robin, Robin Wood, Padilla, are you still online? At yung iba po namin mga colleagues, meron po bang may nais itanong sa ating mga resource persons? Kung wala po, then maybe, yes, before my brief concluding remarks, maybe we could please still hear from DepEd, the Department of Education, uh, Sir Aron John Castro. Yes, sir. You have the floor. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, is, yes, uh, uh, good day uh, to everyone. Uh, Madam Chair, this is Earl Lucito from the Department of Education, Bureau of Human yes, Resource sir. and Organizational Development. Uh, again, Mr. Lucito, you, you have the floor. Thank you for the opportunity, Madam Chair, for us to for me to share uh, the DepEd's uh, position paper. Um, the, the Department of Education interposes no objection and supports the passage of a unified anti-discrimination bill on the basis of sexual orientation, gender identity, or expression, incorporating all the salient provisions of the measures, particularly Senate Bills Number 139, 245, and 442 to promote equality, respect for diversity, and ensuring all Filipinos are protected from all forms of discrimination by providing corresponding penalties for violators. With the emphasis on the education sector, the enactment of such bill will provide much needed support for DepEd's advocacy in promoting anti-discriminatory practices in all schools and offices because our learners and employees need constant education and training on everyone's right to be treated fairly and, and equally regardless of gender, race, culture, age, or disability. Taking into consideration the acts of discrimination are happening in schools and workplaces, DepEd continuously implements the following policies to promote inclusion in the curriculum delivery and governance, as well as addresses mitigate the challenges of discrimination, particularly the DepEd through the implementation of the K-12 basic education program, which ensures the inclusive education as it's the core of the K-12 program. It further promotes the right of every Filipino to quality, equitable, culture-based, and complete basic education. The DepEd also implements the DepEd Child Protection Policy, with advo which advocates implements a zero-tolerance policy for any acts of child abuse, exploitation, violence, discrimination, bullying, and other forms of abuse. In addition, the DepEd is gearing its best efforts to promote the protection of our learners and personnel from the ill effects of gender discrimination with the issue once of DepEd Order No. 32, Series 20, 2017, or the Gender Responsive Basic Education Policy. Furthermore, DepEd ensures the Equal Opportunity Principle, which is mandated by the civil service under its prime HRM, which integrate all the uh, in all the four HR core systems of the department and the equal opportunity principle, equal employment opportunity principle. Lastly, one of one of the new DepEd's efforts to integrate equal opportunity employment principle in its system is the ongoing project with the Asia Foundation called, called the Inclusive Employment Policy, which, which the policy aims to develop a guiding framework for inclusive employment and provide protection and support for individuals from marginalized groups in their application for an undertaking of employment with the DepEd by providing appropriate standards for reasonable accommodation through its governance policy systems. And in conclusion, the DepEd reiterates its support of the passing of the unified bill that will promote equality, respect for diversity, and non-discrimination in all. Again, the DepEd will be submitting, Madam Chair, our official position paper on this. Thank you, Madam Chair, for this opportunity. Salamat din po, Mr. Lucito, at sa DepEd, pati po sa ipadadala niyong position paper ng department. So, dear colleagues, I would like to thank all of you who joined us this morning, presenting your positions, not only to be heard, but to contribute in our efforts in enriching the bill is an important objective of this hearing. The committee shall continue to refine the bill by convening a technical working group meeting. So muli po, maraming salamat sa lahat. Uh, take care and stay healthy. 
This hearing is adjourned. Maraming salamat po.